The tale unwrapped with a jovial scene. A few kids were running around the backyard of a temple. The temple was located at the foot of a massive peak, the Liuhe Mount. The area was calm and peaceful, with a flock of birds whirling around. It appeared that evening was approaching as the clouds gathered to conceal the sunshine. The kids were having a chasing game. Out of the whole bunch, two kids seemed quite robust and outstanding. One of them was Zhang Xiaofun, and the other one was Lin Jingyu. Lin had been chasing Zhang for a long time but hadn't yet succeeded in catching him. Zhang was a swift runner. He knew the tricks and tips to escape being caught. He called Lin's efforts useless and advised him to give up as it was impractical for him to keep rushing and panting like that. The two of them were extreme rivals and competitive when it came to games and sports. Unknowingly, the race trek diverted near the temple, and Zhang stumbled accidentally upon the door to the inside. Lin utilized the opportunity and instantly grabbed his hair to restrain him. He thrillingly announced his victory and declared the opponent defeated. However, Zhang was burning in anger. He wasn't ready to acknowledge his defeat because the door had come in between. He worked hard to the fullest and still had enough stamina to run till the last instant if it wasn't for tripping over the door. Willfulness was deeply incorporated into his personality since childhood. The odds of him surrendering were near zero. As he wasn't admitting his failure, Lin knocked him down, strangled his neck, and refused to spare him unless he confessed. Jang was uneasy to the extent that breathing was becoming an uphill task for him, but that bull-headed, stubborn kid still didn't admit it. Their scrimmage was getting fiercer with each passing instant. Lin's infuriation was boundless when Jang wasn't ready to acknowledge his defeat. The rest of the kids sensed an unusual misfortune and thus withdrew from the two of them. Owing to such a baseless and foolish reason, a wretched adversity was all set to commence. The situation was on the verge of getting out of hand, if it weren't for an old bearded man to make a surprise entrance. An aged, mysterious man suddenly entered the temple and yelled at the kids to stop at once. Due to his call, Lin withdrew her hands immediately. He re-entered reality and realized that he was crossing the limit. The man rebuked and abashed Xiao Fun for his insane attitude despite having considerable talent. As he regained his senses, Lin discerned that the man was a total stranger. They hadn't seen him anywhere in the locality ever before. He inquired about him for the purpose of visiting their shabby temple. The man introduced himself as a monk named Pu Zi. Lin felt insecure and dragged Xiao Fan away. Everyone left, but the monk didn't move. He stayed right where he was. The sky darkened above him, but he didn't seem to be bothered or inconvenienced. A while later, when the night grew, a reverse of fortune struck the two kids. They were kidnapped by an undetermined personality as hostages against Monk Puzi. Xiao Fan and Lin, along with the monk, were kept in a prison cell. Since the two kids were immensely rebellious, they initiated a quarrel in those testing circumstances too. In the hustle and bustle of their squabble, the poor monk got stung by a poisonous, monstrous centipede, which had seven tails. Despite an odd turn of affairs, the rigorous monk was able to drive away the kidnapper, who was later revealed to be a member of the Ching Yun sect. Do you want to know the name of this manga? along with all the manga names of the recaps we did in our channel? How about also the chapter numbers our recaps end? You can simply ask the names in our Discord community for free, or become a donor, to get them all in one place. You can either be a donor in Patreon, or be a member in our YouTube channel. Just scan this QR code, or go to the link in the description, to become a donor. Moreover, becoming a donor automatically makes you a VIP member of our Discord server, with over tens of thousands of members. The kids were eventually in safe hands with Pu Di, and finding a way out wasn't impracticable. However, the monk's health suddenly deteriorated as the poison spread throughout his body. His condition had worsened to the extent that death could approach him at any moment. Foreseeing any adversity, he consumed a unique pill, which delayed death and extended one's life. Slowly, his ailment and unease started getting better. Pu Ji feared death because he had an unattended business, which he was eager to accomplish throughout his life. He was inquisitive and curious about immortality since his teenage years. For more than 50 years, he had been exploring and researching the possibilities of immortality. During the investigation, he learned that the Buddhist technique improved cultivation but had a meager effect on overcoming death. Thus, mastering that technique alone was of no use. Further deepening into the studies, he deduced that three major sects for cultivation were Buddhism, Taoism, and the evil cult. If one flourished in all of them, he would become an immortal. However, each one of them had their drawbacks. The evil cult was infamous for cruelty and evilness, and the Buddhist one was insufficient. Moreover, the seniors of both sects condemned the philosophy of immortality. As compared to those, the Taoistic technique was profound and wonderful, for which he wanted to master its technique. He visited numerous sects, but they all rejected him for one reason or another. Hunting high and low for sects, he came across the Qingyun sect, 
Unfortunately, they not only rejected him, but kidnapped him along with two kids. The only way out to keep alive his strive for immortality, and the balance between life and death, was to pass down the skills he had already mastered. He could then instruct the person to whom the skills were transferred to enter the Ching Yun sect. That idea could prove to be advantageous for his research. For executing the plan, he had two options. One option was Lin, who was extraordinarily blessed with skills, thus making him easily exposable. The second option was Xiao Fan. Since he was way too obstinate, he would succeed in concealing reality, which made him the perfect pick for the task. He proceeded with the mission without unnecessary delay. He took the kids to a safe spot after the kidnapper was driven away, and he rested beside a tree outside in the forest. It was getting colder. The clouds were thundering as if rain was about to pour. He snugged his feet in and began thinking about his mission. Suddenly, Xiao Fan appeared in front of him with a bowl of food. It seemed as if destiny was supporting him with his plan. Xiao Fan was worried for him as it was getting colder, and it might even have rained soon, so he brought him food. Sharing food laid the foundation of their friendly relationship, allowing Pu Ji to disclose his intentions to Xiao Fan. He demonstrated one of his best skills, along with a warning to use it only in a situation of life and death. It was an extraordinarily impactful and vigorous technique, which could summon catastrophic changes if used unjustly. Along with the skill, he gifted him an orb. Since the matter was confidential, he put out a disclaimer to use both of them privately. If anyone found out about the skills, he might get into huge trouble. Fate had united the two of them that day for a particular purpose. Pu Ji was down to tears, as it might be their last encounter. He hoped to meet Xiao Fan in the next life. As it was time to bid farewell, he ordered Xiao Fan to lower to him in respect. He assured him that he was his master. A few days passed by just like that, when one day Xiao Fan and Lin finally returned to their town. As they neared, they witnessed an appalling scene. The environment in front of them was as if hell had broken loose in their town. Before they were kidnapped, their village was a peaceful and beautiful place to live in. It contained a total of 42 houses, which housed about 200 residents. The neighbors had homely relations with each other, and the whole town lived like a family. The environment was nature-friendly and calm. However, when they returned, they couldn't believe their eyes. All the houses had been demolished, all the residents had been turned into corpses, the streets were flooded with blood. The air smelt like carnage, with flies buzzing all around. The beautiful trees had been burnt down. Smoke and fire could still be witnessed. The hire could still be witnessed. The havoc in front of them was beyond their endurance level. The two kids almost passed out as they witnessed such a hellish scene. Since the Ching Yun sect had taken over the place, they got hold of the kids as soon as they returned. All their families had been killed. Thus, they had to be given into someone's custody. Lin was exceptionally skillful and talented, and because of this, the masters fought over possessing him. In contrast, Xiao Fan wasn't known to be as capable, thus he wasn't demanded by anyone. Eventually, after a series of reasons, Taoist Kang Song of the Dragon Head Peak availed his custody. In contrast, Tian Buyi of the Great Bamboo Peak was left with Xiao Fan, so he reluctantly took him. Both the kids were taken away by their masters to their respective peaks and were honored with the rank of disciple. Xiao Fan, though he was a high-ranked disciple of his peak, wasn't trusted to a great extent by his master, probably owing to his mediocre aptitude. Moreover, since he was a child, no one took him seriously. He wasn't emotionally supported by anyone in his locality except for one of his seniors. Tian Linger was his senior, who always looked out for him and brought him warmth. She was the dearest daughter of his master. In his dark and sorrowful life, the only source of joviality was Linger. As long as she was around, he felt the happiest. All his miseries and despair vanished when he had her support. It was justified to call it the best time of his life. She was the only one in the whole clan he could look up to in testing circumstances. Tan was highly gifted. She skillfully mastered flying at an extremely young age. Often, after attending his training classes, Xiao Fan went along with her in his leisure time. She used to demonstrate her flying skills to him. They enjoyed their quality time together. One day, during their adventurous leisure time, Xiao Fan was bullied by a monkey. Because he was a small kid, he got petrified. When Linger saw that he was inconvenienced, she shielded him and vowed to teach that monkey a lesson. Out of the blue, the monkey rushed towards the edge of the cliff and jumped down. Tian was a soft-hearted girl. She never wanted to put anyone in adversity. When she witnessed the monkey endangered, she ran after him. On the verge of the cliff, she couldn't pause her steps and unfortunately tripped over as well. Xiao Fan was puzzled upon seeing Ling'er fall off the cliff. He swiftly made his way to the edge. As he gazed down, he saw the maliciously thick air cover the horizon. Just by peeping, it was evident that the place down there wasn't a good one to stay. He reversed his footsteps and trekked down the mountain to reach the base of the cliff. When he reached the spot, he saw that both Linger and the monkey had fainted. 
He somehow managed to carry them away from the center of the malicious air so that they could heal within the fresh environment. He was feeling nauseous and uneasy due to the malicious air. Astonishingly, the orb that was gifted to him by the monk kept on pulling him towards the center. The rancorous environment was burdening upon him, making it onerous for him to breathe. In the center, there was an unusual black stick that was giving out an ominous aura. Burdened by nausea, he tremblingly collapsed on the ground. Since he was apprehensive about his life, he picked up that black stick and activated the profound Tai Chi technique. With crackling and banging sounds, a luminosity encircled him, and his strength started replenishing. It helped him regain consciousness and focus on his breath. He managed to breathe, but his health was still messed up. The nausea was intensifying with each passing second, which eventually made him cough up blood. After a while, as he felt an improvement in his condition, he got up. Out of the blue, his blood-devouring orb had already merged with an ugly fire poker, giving out ominous air. However, he was lucky enough that his life was saved that day. As soon as he regained vigor, he left that spot and rushed swiftly back home. Luckily, Tien and the monkey both regained consciousness a while later, too. That day, though being a venturous one, had ended eventually. A few days later, the announcement of the Seven Meridial Martial Contest of Ching Yun Sect was made. It was a splendid event which was held only once every 60 years. Being able to participate in it was a matter of pride and luck. Providentially, Xiao Fan could participate in it too. Quite some days prior to the event, its preparations had begun. Since the event comprised a series of exercises and matches, the management team members drew straws to decide the order of the matches. A total of six rounds were finalized, and the participant who triumphed in all the rounds would be declared as the winner. The event became the talk of the town. The whole community was found busy discussing the occasion. All the people of the community lent their helping hand in clearing the decks and gearing up for the mega event. Finally, the countdown for the event began as the special day dawned. There were plenty of renowned participants who were assumed to have higher odds of winning. Surprisingly, Xiao Fan was also a part of them. In fact, owing to his strength, luck, and tiring efforts, he secured the position of the most remarkable dark horse of the tournament. His fellow participants were quite pressurized by his abilities. Soon everyone geared up for the grand inaugural. The participants were instructed to move on to their final positions for the commencement of the tournament. With a colossal clamor, the first round was initiated. Though Xiao Fan caught the attention of many spectators due to his skills, the elite class of the community surpassed him in the first round. His abilities were continuously improving. The sightseers were praising his efforts. They bestowed him with immense respect and love. It was probably for the first time in his life he was regarded with honor by such a vast crowd. It was nothing less than a dream for him. Winning the contest wasn't his foremost goal. What mattered more was the public acclaim he secured. Though the sturdy participants transcended him, he remained motivated. During one of the subsequent rounds, the exercise track passed through desolated paths in the mountains. Within the gloomy forest, he witnessed a scene that blew away his mind. It was, it was way too melancholic and dismal to overshadow the merriness of the contest. Somewhere between the somber trees, he saw his beloved senior, Tian Ling'er, in the arms of another senior, Chi Hao. She was glowing uniquely on that auspicious eve. The blush on her cheeks indicated pure love. Xiao Fan had never seen her more charming than with Chi Hao. Maybe her beauty was only for the special people she cherished. Deep down, he felt resentful. He wanted to stay there and dote on her allure, but he was in the middle of the round of a mega tournament. If it weren't for the exercise, he would have frozen right at his spot to cherish her glamour. Somehow, he unwillingly proceeded with the round. As per the results put forward by the judges, Xiao Fan made it to the top four winners, but the semi-final and the final rounds were still to be fought. Considering his outstanding abilities, he could have secured the first place, but his mental exhaustion restrained him. Throughout the contest, all he could think of was Ling'er and Chi Hao. He couldn't exterminate that picture from his mind. A hollowing pain dwelled in his heart. He was deeply dismayed. Nevertheless, that wrecking day ended. At long last, the day of the semi-final round had dawned. The whole crowd was anxiously looking forward to the round. In the semi-finals, Xiao Fan was to contest against his opponent Lu Xuechi, who was also one of the junior disciples of the Bamboo Peak. The senior disciples of the peak out in the crowd were chit-chatting about the tournament. They were thrilled to see Lu in the boxing ring. They could finally witness her charm, and it was a fabulous opportunity for them to admire her enchantment. She was one of the most beautiful junior disciples of the Bamboo Peak, but not many had seen her before. Now that she was finally up on the stage, everyone could be captivated by her. She was known to be immensely skillful, and now that she was combating against a novice junior, the disciples were worried for his safety. However, the encounter was thought to be an impactful one, since both of them were top-tiered juniors. 
Xiao Fan had proved his abilities in the previous rounds. Thus, it wasn't implausible for him to fight Liu, but surely it was an uphill battle. Though the seniors discerned his potential, the mere spectators considered him below par. On the side of the boxing ring facing the temple, a VIP lounge was constructed, and the Great Bamboo Peak's chief, Tian Bui, sat there. Next to the chief sat his mistress, Suru. The two of them were the honorable judges of the semi-final and final rounds, along with being the chief guests of the event. Moving slightly aside, the vice chief of the minor Bamboo Peak, Master Shui Yue, was seated. The senior disciples and the spectators weren't seated far from the VIPs, and their conversations were easily heard by the chief and his mistress. They were babbling about Lu's vigor and how Xiao Fan would be defeated by her. Xiao Fan was extremely unworthy in their perception. They assumed he had trounced already. Lu had triumphed over several other sturdy contestants already, thus defeating Xiao Fan wasn't an issue for her. According to them, it was merely his luck that kept him in the contest up till the semi-finals. They were relieved to know that the match between the two participants wouldn't last long, which would leave them more time to watch Qi Hao's fight. Tian Buyi was enraged to hear the assumptions about his disciple. His expectations with Xiao Fan were elevated. The mistress calmed him down as the match was about to begin. Xiao Fan stood courageously on the side of the ring, facing his master. He was geared up to flourish through the last two rounds to dignify his glorious master, whereas Lu stood valiantly on the opposite side, flaunting her long, lustrous black hair. She truly was enchanting. As the bell trolled three times, the contestants drew closer towards each other. Lu introduced herself as the disciple of the Bamboo Peak, designated to rival Xiao Fan in the semi-final round. Xiao Fan didn't lend an ear to her. He couldn't focus on her as his mind was preoccupied with his senior linger. Her image in his mind was burdening him beyond his endurance. Apparently his gaze was set on Lu, but deep down his eyes ferreted around for senior linger. He deserved to be supported by her since it was the most auspicious event of his life, but she didn't bother to pay him a visit. Of course, she might be cheering up for Senior Chi Hao's fight. Though it wasn't feasible for Xiao Fan to give his best in that round, he stood up audaciously in front of his opponent. He took, he took a few steps back, lowered to his opponent in respect, and introduced himself. To give an intrepid impression, he asked her not to hold back during the encounter. Lu gave him a dispassionate cold stare. She wasn't feared by him, but surely was amazed by his valor. Who says something like that to his opponent before the fight? She initially took it as a sarcastic comment, but the expression on Xiao Fan's face didn't support her assumption. Be that as it may, she didn't make a fuss out of it. Instead, she contented herself and intended to end the fight as soon as possible. His daring conduct not only puzzled his opponent, but also won the credence of many spectators out there in the crowd. Tian Bui was somehow not convinced by Xiao Fan's fake intrepidness. He picked up that something was wrong with him. The appreciation from the crowd won Xiao Fan's heart. Their certitude replenished his lost concentration to some extent. Thus he looked into the eyes of his opponent. At that moment he realized that Lu was an alluring beauty. There was a valid reason behind the fact that she won millions of hearts with her beauty. She gave out captivating vibes. What made her even more beautiful was her resemblance to Senior Linger. However, he had nothing to do with her charm. The only woman who resided in his heart was his senior, who wouldn't even care if he died right there during the contest. It wouldn't take her longer than a few days to forget his existence. She won't remain sorrowful for his death. In fact, she will continue living a happy and contented life with Senior Chi Hao. That was the reality. It was undeniable. The round began, with the first move coming from Lu. Even if he desired to remain attentive towards defending himself, he couldn't concentrate. Suddenly, a flashback of the previous day passed through his mind. The prior night, he was wandering in the forest, searching for his monkey, whom he had named Xiao Hui. It was instead a naughty monkey. Xiao Fan petted him after the incident of his falling from the cliff. It usually used to maunder in the forest, probably hunting for food. In the preceding night, the monkey had embarked on its forest venture again. Xiao Fan found him squeaking and jumping on one of the trees. He picked him up to take him back home, but on his return, he saw a beautiful lady with lustrous long hair sobbing secretly. He stopped with the intention of helping her with the issue. To his surprise, that woman was his senior, Linger. As he approached closer, he saw her red eyes with tears rolling down her cheeks. Why was she crying? Who bullied her? He gathered the courage to ask her about the issue. Startled to see Xiao Fan behind her, she instantly embraced him and cried her heart out. Xiao Fan was taken aback. Her faint fragrance was melting his heart. It felt like a dream to him. Puzzled by her tears, he couldn't think of a way to console her. Her tears were extremely painful for him. All he wanted to do was to hold her close to his heart and solace her. But he didn't dare to. The element of personal space and respect for his senior overshadowed his painful emotions. Linger was completely panicked that she didn't even notice Xiao Hui until it squeaked to announce its presence. 
The monkey was also cast down by her agony, which was evident as it rubbed its hands on her face. She lovingly held it in her arms and apologized to Xiao Fan for worrying them. As she finally got hold of her emotions, Linger Linger narrated the reason for her agony. She said that the evening was extremely mournful for her because it was the very first time in her life that her parents scolded her badly. Earlier to that, her parents never admonished her even for prodigious mistakes. She was deeply perturbed by their reprimand. Xiao Fan was astonished to hear that. She was the most precious daughter of the master and mistress. They held her very dear. All her tantrums were cherished by them. How could they scold her so badly that it made her shed tears all alone in the forest? It was something far beyond expectations. She hesitantly disclosed that she was in love with Qi Hao, and when she told her parents about it, they went furious. She thought Xiao Fan was blindfolded from that reality, but deep down, he was very well aware of it. Who else could be more concerned about the matter other than him? She said that the fact was only leaked to the senior disciples of the Minor Bamboo Peak. Senior Wen Min was her friend from the Minor Peak, with whom she had shared her emotions. Despite repeated warnings to keep the issue secret, Wen Min still disclosed the matter further. Wen Min informed Master Shui Yue about it, and she revealed it to her mother, the mistress. Linger ranted that her parents were ruining her love story due to their ego. The ethnic differences among different societies proved to be the murderer of her love life. Since Chi Hao belonged to the Dragon Head Peak, her parents would feel embarrassed if their daughter dated a disciple from another peak. According to them, it would be a threat to their respect in the Qing Yun sect. The master had no concern for her feelings. His gloriousness in his sect was all that bothered him. When Linger was narrating her feelings towards Chi Hao, Xiao Fan's heart was wretched. All her words felt like knives to him. The knives incised his heart deeper and deeper, eventually slicing it open. His soul was torn into hundreds of pieces. Linger continued with the story. She expressed her intention to stay with Chi Hao no matter what. Even if it cost her life, she would opt for him. Her parents' objection couldn't shatter her resolution. They had sworn to remain by each other's side at any cost. Her last statement gobsmacked Xiao Fan. His heart skipped a beat when he learned that he would always remain a worrisome junior to her. She had already sworn to stay with Chi Hao, and his chances had dropped to zero. All the rays of hope were masked by the clouds of regret and dismay. Her vow was the final nail in the coffin of his dreams. He was lost in his dreams for quite a long time in the middle of the semi-final round. All of a sudden, he felt a strong blow on his face, thus immediately recovered from the world of imagination and flashbacks. He got to know that Lu had gotten him down with an extremely impactful punch. He was badly hurt. His arm was bleeding profoundly. The only option he had was to utilize the skill taught to him by his master, Puji. To execute the move, he held his breath and pressed his sword firmly. Within an instant, he managed to stand up to counteract her blow. The crowd started applauding him for his valor. It was fortuitous of him to remain persistent in front of the mighty fighter, Lu. Lu was staggered to see him stand up fearlessly after her attack. She finally encountered a courageous opponent, whom it would be fun to defeat. Her sword, Tianya, was also thrilled for an upscale combat. Since he had endured the first round, she invited him for the second encounter. Though his sword seemed mysterious and queer, she didn't overthink it. Her self-confidence was beyond all obstacles. She knew that victory would surely be for her. However, Xiao Fan falsified her overconfident assumptions. As he balanced his steps and gathered courage, he moved closer to Lu. Within an instant, he swooshed his uncanny weapon forward and banged her with a powerful blow. It was a comparable answer to her punch. The spectators were amazed by his vigor. The show was getting interesting. Lu was completely taken aback by his counteract. She hadn't anticipated such a strong punch coming from him. Her ridicule transformed into apprehensiveness. She was concerned for her victory. It couldn't continue like that. She had to make a move in order to win. The only option she was left with in order to save her honor was to use her Tianya sword. The once incompatible disciple, Xiao Fan, was now formidable enough to compel the usage of Tianya. It was a uniquely spectacular sword that Lu didn't use ordinarily. She reserved it for special circumstances. Since Xiao Fan was a threat to her prestige, the situation demanded its use. She gloriously unsheathed the magnificent sword out of the scabbard. The whole crowd of spectators was utterly astounded. The sky-reaching bamboo peak was attacked by a pin-drop silence. The clock of anxiousness was ticking. It appeared as if bloodshedding was destined in the semi-final. The battle had become a matter of life and death. Lu was disheartened by the disgraceful blow she received from Xiao Fan. Only the Tianya sword could take her revenge. The vice chief Shui Yue expressed her astonishment at the dramatic turn of events. The fact that Lu was gifted with exceptional skills could justify the usage of the Tianya sword, but she still lacked the experience to execute the thunder technique. All the judges were worried for Xiao Fan's life. The mistress advised Chief Tian to order Xiao Fan to surrender, but he refused. He had high expectations from Xiao Fan. 
He was confident about his skills and believed firmly that he would find his way out himself. Of the uproar her sword had caused among the crowd, Lu realized that it was way too hasty to utilize it, but it was irreversible. Thus, she had to proceed with it. She recalled her master, Shui Yue, warning her about the severe backlash of the thunder technique. She was told that her inexperience could prove to be troublesome, leading to an irremediable disaster. Though it wasn't completely implausible for her to execute it, Shui Yue warned her to refrain from it unless it was a situation of life and death. The situation she was facing at that moment couldn't be worse. It surely was a matter of life and death. Using the sword was indispensable. She felt sorry for her master as she was going to insubordinate her. Winning the battle was deemed compulsory for her. Within a flash of a second, she began casting the spell for the thunder technique. She summoned the brilliantly mighty fury of the sky onto her sword. The sky roared and rumbled fiercely. A colossal li lightning struck her sword. Thundering energy was being fueled into her sword. Every human around her was awestruck by the amazing act. Even Tien was taken aback by Lu's splendid capabilities. He admired Vice Chief Shui Yue's training. She surely had upskilled a phenomenal disciple. Lu lifted her hands to position for the move. As she swooshed her sword, her own hand accidentally got incised. It got hurt so badly that blood was dripping from it continuously. The spectacular power of the Tianya sword was revealed to her. However, she didn't let her injury divert her attention from the major goal. She once again positioned herself for the thunder technique and rushed towards her opponent with full strength. On the other hand, Xiao Fan geared up and lifted his sword. He also swiftly ran towards Lu. Both the participants were as furious as fire. They were on the motive of impressing their masters. As they both neared, the crowd started getting fretful about the impactful encounter. Xiao Fan intrepidly stood his pace, but when Lu reached within a close range to him, he suddenly lost concentration. He witnessed the portrayal of his senior Linger in Lu's eyes. It felt to him as if she was calling him in her melodious voice. He completely lost track of the fight, due to which his sword subconsciously tripped from his hand. Unfortunately, he couldn't defend himself from the vigorous wrath of the Tianya sword. The sword swished through his body, with blood shedding all around. He was severely injured. The rage of the Thunder Sword technique was finally proven. Xiao Fan's master, Tian, was taken aback by his despicable defeat. Nevertheless, the result conformed to the conjecture. Fast forward a few days later, Xiao Fan was found resting on his bed with bandages all around his body. He was lost in deep thoughts. The rage inside him, caused by losing linger to Qi Hao, was disturbing his peace. He was burning in the fire of wrath. Walking alone in the darkness wasn't desirable to him. It was just a compulsion since he had no other place to walk. He was desolated to the extent that it didn't matter where he walked because he was going to be alone in any case. The Fury stipulated him to swear to the Devil of the Underworld that he would go to any extent to attain his goal. Even if his body was burnt into, into ashes, or the whole world had to perish with him, his intentions wouldn't be amended. He had been occupied with thoughts of revenge for quite a few days. It was a bright and sunny day. The sudden tweeting of birds retrieved him from daydreaming. The fire burning inside him had made him thirsty. He looked around and found a jug placed on a table near the door. It was out of his reach, so he had to get up in order to fetch it. The injuries he got during contesting with Lu were extremely deep. It was still excruciating for him to move his muscles, but he gave it a try and got up to fetch water. Just as his feet touched the ground, he saw someone enter his room with a glass of water. She was the Mistress Suru. Xiao Fan was dumbfounded to see the mistress at his home. He was puzzled to the extent that he couldn't comprehend how to greet her, so he lowered immediately despite his sore injuries. The mistress consoled him and said that there wasn't any need for such formalities and ordered him to relax. She was relieved to see that most of his external wounds were healed. However, his veins were severely injured due to the impactful blows he received. Thus, resting was mandatory for him. She instructed him to rest on his bed, and she sat on a chair next to him. Xiao Fan felt humiliated since he had embarrassed his master and mistress by losing the tournament. He sincerely apologized to her for his inability. The mistress's reaction was unforeseen. Instead of bashing him for being uncompetitive, she praised him for his valor and courage. She consoled him and said that his master was extremely proud of him. For the last 300 years, no one has performed superior to Xiao Fan other than his master. He had made the bamboo peak proud of his outstanding skills. Xiao Fan was over the moon for the compliment, saying that he was grateful for fate supporting him. Since it had been quite some time since the semifinals ended, he asked the mistress about the final winner of the tournament, presuming it was Lu. To his astonishment, the mistress revealed that Lu wasn't the winner. The winner was a boy named Chi Hao from Dragonhead Peak. Xiao Fan was incoherent with amazement to hear that Chi Hao was the winner. It was Ling'er's lover again. Destiny didn't want him to overlook that heart-wrenching scene. However, he managed to conceal his emotions from the mistress and dis disheartedly admired Chi Hao's skills. He truly was outstanding since Lu, who owned the Tianya sword, lost to him.
It wasn't a child's play to persist against the havocing Tianya sword. According to the mistress, Lu wouldn't ever have used the sword in the tournament if it wasn't for Xiao Fan's splendid counteracts. His valorous fight compelled her to use the thunder technique in order to save her honor. Though Xiao Fan was badly injured by the sword, using the Tianya sword wasn't easy for Lu as well. It cost her a fortune of irremediable strength. The mistress revealed another astonishing fact. The person who had rescued his life was Master Tian. Xiao Fan was perplexed to know that his master had gone to such heights in order to save his life. Xiao Fan had remained unconscious for the previous five days. He had no idea of what he had gone through after being attacked by Lu. It was only the previous night when he regained consciousness and started getting better. The mistress conversed with him about all the things that went on with him since the day he lost consciousness. All of a sudden, the two of them were interrupted by a cough. It appeared as if someone was standing at the door or seeking permission to enter. Out of the blue, Xiao Fan's master, Chief Tian, entered his room. He acted as if he had come searching for his wife. Tian was deeply grieved by Xiao Fan's injury. Xiao Fan was very dear to him, as he was the youngest disciple. He had come to inquire about his health as he was told about him gaining consciousness. He tried acting dispassionate by consoling him that dying merely because of superficial injuries was impracticable, but his wife exposed his restlessness caused by Xiao Fan's ailment. He had been spending his nights anguished and troubled ever since his disciple got injured. In the middle of the night, he used to babble meaningless sentences about Xiao Fan's health. The master coughed lightly, indicating his wife to stop revealing further reality to the child, and comforted him that he would soon recover as his wounds were in better condition. After consoling him, he came towards the major topic. The peculiar sword Xiao Fan had been using during the contest caught his attention. It wasn't a regular sword. The fact that it had succeeded somewhat in restricting Tianya Sword's divine thunder technique amazed everyone, including the master. He got curious about it. How could a small kid like Xiao Fan acquire possession of a unique weapon? Apparently, he seemed inexperienced and naive, thus it was unconvincing for anyone to believe his exceptional weapon skills. Tian asked Xiao Fan how he had acquired its possession. Xiao Fan was befuddled as he was asked about the stick. He wasn't aware of its powers since he found it in the valley when he went to rescue Ling'er, However, he was fully persuaded that the amalgamation of the uncanny stick and the blood-devouring orb gifted to him by monk Pu Ji was unquestionably deadly. The monk had already informed him about the sumptuous utilities of the orb, that it could devour blood out of a person's veins. Its effect was extremely malicious, which would be encouraged only by sinister-minded people. Righteous priests, like his master, wouldn't tolerate such menacing effects. It would be ravaging if Tian found out about the reality of the orb, Thus, it was preferable to conceal the reality and make up an excuse. His master, Pu Ji, had also forbidden him to reveal it to anyone in the village. As Xiao Fan was busy trying to, to make up an excuse, Tian sensed hesitancy in his expression. The anxious impression on his face indicated to him veiling reality. Xiao Fan instantly replied that he couldn't dare lie to his master. He expounded the fake backstory of the stick. According to his counterfeit tale, he found the stick back in the valley years ago when he was out on a venture with Senior Linger. Since the stick was peculiar, he picked it out of curiosity. However, as soon as he got hold of it, he felt his blood being sucked up by the stick. The feeling was extremely nauseating. It made him pass out instantly. He tried switching the role of the blood-devouring orb with the stick in order to deceive Tian about the actuality. Fortunately, he succeeded. Tian's suspicions were set aside. He was ready to put his faith in his story because he was narrating it with immense confidence. Tian himself hadn't ever heard of such a phenomenon. Thus, it was credible that a young kid like Xiao Fan couldn't make it up on his own. Though he linked the narration to the sinister effect of blood-devouring orb possessed by the evil cult, he discerned no odds of Xiao Fan owning one of it. It was unlikely for, for an ingenuous and unsophisticated child to practice evil cult and immortality on such an elevated level. However, since he was an accomplished and knowledgeable chief, he didn't rely completely on his story. He was skeptical of the mild chances of falsehood in the story. Tian presented his condolences to Xiao Fan since the ominous blood-devouring weapon was connected to him through his blood. Xiao Fan faked curiosity, asking him to elucidate the blood-devouring phenomenon. Tian deemed it redundant to give further elucidation on the topic. He ordered his wife to accompany him back to the temple as the conversation was over and picked the anomalous stick with the intention to take it along. While leaving, he ordered Xiao Fan to meet him at the sky-reaching peak once he regains health. The stick was to remain with the master until Xiao Fan made it to the assessment held on top of the peak. Xiao Fan was bewildered. He had lied to his master about the stick. If Tian comprehended the reality by any means, he would be ruined. Moreover, the commitment he had made with his master Pu Ji would remain unfulfilled. He fell on the bed in dismay. Just like that, a few days passed. 
Xiao Fan was completely occupied by the stress of his blood-devouring orb and the special bond he shared with Monk Puji. He wished for immediate recovery, so that he could visit Tian on the peak in order to win back his sword. By nature's will, he recuperated in no time. When he was fully confident about his strength, he decided to pay a call to Tian. Tian took him along for the assessment of his unique sword. The venue was a mansion situated on top of the sky-reaching peak. To reach it, one had to trek through countless stairs. Since Xiao Fan had newly recovered from an ailment, it was an arduous task for him. While walking up, he recalled the period five years ago when he initially moved to the Bamboo Peak. He was a small kid back then. Those days were worth cherishing since he wasn't answerable in any way to anyone due to his minor age. Now that he had grown up, he wondered what kind of fate awaited him further. After climbing the stairs, they had finally made it to the top of the peak. They were shown the way to the hall, where all the senior members of the Qingyun sect were awaiting him. It was a huge, huge hall, at the center of which stood Xiao Fan and Tian. The chiefs and vice chiefs of different peaks were seated at the outskirts of the hall. The senior most of the personnel was the chief of the sky reaching peak, Paragon Daok Siwan. Next to him was seated Taoist Kang Song, chief of the Dragon Head Peak. Moving further onward, Vice Chief Shui Yue was seated. Paragon greeted his junior Tian and expressed his gratitude for his presence. Xiao Fan was staggered to stand among such high ranked personnel. He immediately lowered and greeted every master. Following the meet and greet, the reason behind Xiao Fan's invitation was unfolded. Since Paragon was the head of all, he began the session by inquiring Xiao Fan about the notable sword he used during the tournament. Tian answered the query on behalf of Xiao Fan, narrating the exact same story that he had been told. Since Xiao Fan hadn't possessed that weapon when he moved in, it was quite believable that he might have acquired it accidentally. However, his made-up tales seemed trustworthy only to his own master, who was blindfolded in his love. The rest of the masters could effortlessly visualize the verity. To them, Xiao Fan's recital wasn't credible enough to be blindly trusted. Acquiring such a high-level divine sword by accident wasn't tenable enough. The weapon had a power of magnitude comparable to the Tianya sword as it was able to stand against it. One of the masters objected to the demonic aura that might be housed by the black sword at which Tian broke out. Being black in color in no way indicated a demonic background. Black was just a color. It didn't represent any of the spiritual entities. Everyone criticized Tian for employing such a childish attitude towards the issue. Although the stick seemed to be an ordinary weapon, apparently, the malevolent aura which radiated from its inside couldn't be ignored. Controlling the stick wasn't trouble-free even for Paragon, who mastered immense heights of cultivation. How on earth was it feasible for a youngster like Xiao Fan? Paragon's concerns weren't baseless. His apprehension truly made sense. In conclusion, he announced to justly deal with the matter on his own and asked Tian to stay away from it. Discussions on the issue went on for hours when finally, Paragon declared Xiao Fan's sword to be a blood-devouring object. The chief of the Dragon Head Peak put forward his opinion that Xiao Fan might be a spy sent in by a cultist in order to leak the techniques of the Qing Yun sect. He could be on an extremely disastrous mission, his objection infuriated Tian. His disciple was dear to him. It was hurtful to hear such derogatory remarks about him. If he really was a spy, then he would have been wise enough to properly conceal his skills during the tournament. He was rather a naive little kid who couldn't even shield himself. He wasn't credible to be considered a spy. If they were persuaded by their stance, then to make it fair, the Dragon Head Peak's disciple Lin Jing Yu must also be doubtful since both the kids had moved in together. Kang Song boiled in anger as his disciple was being compared to Xiao Fan. They had nothing in common. They hadn't even met during the past five years. To add fuel to the fire, Tian abashed Kang Song that his disciple couldn't even make it to the top four during the contest, while his disciple Xiao Fan had secured the fourth position due to his spectacular skills. Their criticism took a turn and converted into a hot-headed battle. None of them were ready to accept their disciple as inferior. The encounter was infuriated to the extent that Kang Song denounced Tian's credibility. He doubted his Carmine Blade's sword skills. All of a sudden, their senior paragon rebuked them for their uncivilized behavior within a sectorial meeting. Soon they realized that they were way too zoned out and apologized to their master. To settle the matter, paragon questioned Xiao Fan to elucidate the backstory himself, as it would clear many suspicions and confusion. Xiao Fan remained steadfast in his stance that he had found the stick coincidentally in the valley a few years back, and the stick had nauseated him by sucking its blood. Kang Song interrupted him by saying that his words weren't trustworthy. The blood refining technique he had utilized was one of the most sinister and wicked techniques. Practicing ultra wicked techniques wasn't possible without aid from a cult. Kang Song was fully persuaded that Xiao Fan was a cultist spy. Foreseeing the jeopardy he posed to the Qingyun sect, he declared that Xiao Fan shouldn't be spared in any case for his rebellion. 
In defense of his disciple, Tian said that it was improbable for a precocious spy to reveal his magical abilities in front of a huge crowd. According to Kang Song, it was pretty odds-on since cults were of unsound mind, and they usually ended up acting absurd. He insisted on the fact that the blood refining technique was only embraced by wicked cults because none of them could master it. The way he expressed his disquietedness about the vileness of the technique clearly indicated that he had limited knowledge about it. When he was asked by Master Shui Yue to elucidate the intensity of the foulness, he was speechless. Thus, it was affirmed that Kang Song's allegations against Xiao Fan were baseless. It wasn't unbiased to grant him the kid a death sentence merely on the basis of the evilness of a technique associated with his weapon unless he had been proven guilty of actually executing the skill. Shui Yue comprehended Kang Song's true intentions to the rest of the masters. He aimed at killing emerging talent from another branch of the sect merely for the sake of his own status. Correcting her words, Kang Song said that the psyche behind his intention was to kill the wrong person rather than letting go of an actual fiend. His outlook was quite murderous. If anyone was evil in the whole situation, it would be Kang Song himself since his persona was extremely foul and wicked. Killing a human on the basis of doubt was a conduct of pure evil. The Qing Yun sect housed noble and righteous people. If they began slandering humanity due to incertitude, there would be no difference between them and the evils. Chief Paragon severely reprimanded him for his irrational ideas. He spotted a major lack of the rulers of his sect. Though they all had profound cultivation, they were majorly lacking behind in comprehending doctrines. Paragon's statement was intended not only for the chiefs, but also for all of his sect, including Xiao Fan. Xiao Fan sighed in relief when Paragon spoke against Kang Song. Did it mean he wouldn't be killed? Did he finally survive the trial? The chief handed over the sword back to Xiao Fan and ordered his slave to call the three musketeers of the sect. A while later, the three of them arrived up the mountain, panting and crackling. One of them was Senior Chi Hao of the Dragon Head Peak, the other was Zeng Shu Shu from the Whirling Wind Peak, and the last one was unforgettable Lu Shui Qi from the Minor Bamboo Peak. Xiao Fan stood bewildered, neither did he have an idea why they were called, nor any approximation of his future fate. Letting it be as it was, the scene shifted towards the base of the Bamboo Peak. Mistress Suru was resting in her bedroom when she saw Master Tian arrive home. She handed him over a glass of water and asked about the trial. She scanned the area outside but couldn't spot Xiao Fan, thus got apprehensive. Tian comforted her that Xiao Fan was totally fine. He had just gone to accompany his seniors down the mountain for their quest, as per Master's rulings. If it weren't for Master Paragon's gentleness, Xiao Fan would have been doomed due to Kang Song's ill intentions. Suru was astonished. How could Xiao Fan go down the mountain? One had to fly in order to reach the bottom and he hadn't yet mastered flying. He was in a disaster. When Tian learned that Xiao Fan couldn't fly, he immediately spat out the water he was drinking. He instantly called his daughter Linger and rebuked her for not teaching him flying. Linger said that she had demonstrated the theory but didn't insist on practice since he was injured. Tian lost his temper. He was content during his return from the meeting since he perceived Xiao Fan knew how to fly. Now that he was aware of his inabilities, he desperately wandered around the temple. Meanwhile, Zooming into Xiao Fan's flying journey at the ocean of clouds of Mount Qingyun, it was a huge failure. Xiao Fan was astounded when he found out that he would have to fly down the mountain. He had never practiced lifting himself from the ground. His seniors instructed him to utilize his stick as a fire poker for flying. The poor kid couldn't even position himself on the stick. Flying was totally out of his league. As he leaped onto the stick, he automatically got repositioned upside down. The whole world was reversed for him. Zeng carped at his posture being unsightly, but it was unavoidable. Xiao Fan ranted that flying upside down wasn't desirable for him either, thus there was no need for criticism. Somehow, after multiple attempts, he finally grasped the proper posture. However, his flying skills were still novice. It, it wasn't prudent of the seniors to leave him flying unattended, thus none of them dared to move far. They encircled him completely since the need to rescue him could arise at any moment. They were worried that the outstanding junior disciple might trip over his fire poker. In that case, he would become the biggest disgrace of his sect. Anyhow, they reached the Heyang City, located at the foot of Mount Qingyun. It was a half-day trip ordinarily, but since they were traveling with a novice, it took them a whole day. They reached just before sunset. Xiao Fan was taken aback by the beauty of that city. As they surpassed the entrance, the vibrant ethnicity of the city became evident. Enchanting birds added to the mesmerizing vibe of the city by their melodies. Zeng stepped forward to state some amazing facts about the city. Its population was around two to three hundred thousand. And since it was at a prime location, merchants passed through it often. Senior Lu was impressed by his proficiency. As a reply to her flattery, Zeng said that all his expertise was a result of frequent reading. 
While in reality, he acquired this knowledge during his previous trips to the city. He had been there multiple times earlier, but this time, there was something captivating about the trip since he had come with an epitome of beauty, referring to Lou. As they walked down the street, Lou's beauty turned many heads towards her. The locals were fascinated by her charm. Many young men had gathered on the outskirts of the street solely to endure her beauty. In fact, many quarreled among themselves in jealousy. After all, they were men. They had the guts to call any pretty woman an epitome of beauty. Lou was infuriated at their discourteous conduct. For an instant, she thought of fueling up her Tianya sword in order to teach them a lesson, but her companions restricted her. If she actually used the sword, the historic city might end up plundered. Senior Chi Hao diverted her attention by showing her candy fruits. Meanwhile, Xiao Fan was lost in the alluring beauty of the city. He hadn't seen the world beyond mountains. Witnessing such a vibrant and lively city was a dream to him. While walking down the streets, they passed through a lavish five-star restaurant. Zheng fulfilled his duty as a tour guide and reported that the restaurant was the most expensive one in the city. He even offers Senior Lu a treat in that restaurant in the future when he becomes wealthy. Xiao Fan was totally out of their league. He described the restaurant as super-duper pricey and condemned spending a fortune on eating at such an overpriced spot. As they could discern from the outside, the restaurant had a luxurious interior with elegant and outclassed decor. Their staff seemed well-trained and professional. Even the customers of that restaurant appeared to be noble and wealthy. Witnessing such a top-standard place gourmandized Zung's feelings. As they were ravening with hunger, they all wanted to enjoy the lavish food offered there. Though they were short of money to pay the charges of that restaurant, Senior Ti Hao thought of a way out. Since the residents of the Qingyun Mountain were extremely vulnerable to them, they didn't charge them much. If they introduced themselves as senior disciples of the Qingyun sect, they would be allowed to enjoy the sumptuous food at a discounted price. Xiao Fan's jealousy fueled up as Qi Hao proved himself both intelligent and handsome. He possessed all the attributes of an ideal guy. That's why Senior Linger fell in love with him. Antipathy aside, Qi Hao's idea was worth applauding. Thus, they all set their feet in the restaurant assertively. As expected, the waiter welcomed them warmly and presented them the highest-rated luxurious food of their restaurant. They were led towards a VIP table with all sorts of continental dishes and desserts garnished. The mouth-watering food awestruck all of them. Senior Chi Hao ordered his team to dig into the grand feast. They all rejoiced in the rich taste of the dishes. However, Xiao Fan was totally taken aback by the succulent taste of the fish. He cherished it to the extent that he could name each and every ingredient used in its preparation. It was a rather well-cooked fish, with a sweet touch indicating the presence of sugar. Since the fish was non-stingy, ginger must have been added to it in order to control the fishy odor. The richness in its taste could be attributed to the presence of caramelized green onions. The only thing which he couldn't comprehend was the uniqueness of the species to which the fish belonged. Thus, he inquired the chef about it. The chef regarded the steamed fish as their restaurant's specialty, which was quite fam famous in the Heiyang city. All the seniors, especially Zheng, were flabbergasted by Xiao Fan's food-related knowledge. Apparently, he seemed to be an artless kid, but he surely housed concealed talent within him. Xiao Fan didn't brag about his extraordinary skills. It was just that he had an interest in cooking and baking, which polished his expertness. All of a sudden, a customer from the neighboring table reprimanded the chef for scamming their customers. She'd been listening to their discussion about the fish for a long time, and thus presented her own school of thought on the topic. According to her knowledge, that fish was a native product of Jugu Mountain in the south. Heyang City was settled thousands of miles from that mountain. Thus, it was impracticable for any restaurant to bring the fish there. In that case, it proved that they had been defrauding their customers for ages in the name of that special steamed fish. That girl was a quintessence of beauty with brains. She was extremely captivating, and her personality depicted pure intelligence. The rest of the customers in the restaurant seemed to enjoy the clash of opinions since it was put forward by a beautiful lady. They were mesmerized to have a bunch of beauties on board, one of which was Lou. Hearing the bawdy comments passed by indecent men, Senior Lou gave them a cold and dispassionate stare. Getting back to the complaint filed by the girl, her queries were resolved by the chef in a very conscientious manner. With due respect, he disclosed the explanation that their steamed May fish was definitely a local product of Mount Jugu, but Master Paragon had brought the fish along with him when he passed through that mountain. Fortunately, the fish not only survived in the Heyang City, but also developed and flourished well under controlled conditions. The owners of the restaurant were grateful for Master Paragon's efforts. Owing to his kind endeavors, the residents of their city could enjoy such a sumptuous fish. Hearing praise for Master Paragon of the Qingyun sect, that girl was infuriated. She thumped in rage against the members of the Qingyun sect. Her frenzied expressions indicated extreme hatred for that sect. It was plausible that she might be holding some personal grudges against them. 
As Senior Chi Hao sensed her rampage, he immediately ordered everyone to peace out, as they were just trying to enjoy a delicious meal. He asked his friends to hurry up as the meal was getting cold. So that day ended on a good note. They flew all the way down to the city, which was a nightmare for Xiao Fan, but the rest of them enjoyed the journey. Then they relished a luscious meal in the top restaurant of the city, and now they were off to their headquarters. As the sun was just about to sink, the horizon turned purplish and pinkish. The colors in the sky were extremely enthralling. Soon they reached the headquarters, where they had to spend the night. The building was of a typical ethnic type, with a huge backyard. The backyard was full of spellbinding flowers and trees. It emitted a calm and peaceful vibe. Chi Hao instructed his team members to rest, as they would be heading for Kongsang Mountain the next day. They all trudged towards their rooms. Everyone was exhausted to the extent that they couldn't think of any other matter, but Xiao Fan kept boiling in jealousy. It was gallant of him to spend a whole day with his rival. He had shown pretty good conduct throughout, without letting anyone avail a hint at his true feelings. Though he immensely abominated Chi Hao, he couldn't deny his precocity and astuteness. Along with being immensely intelligent, he was handsome, mature, and sophisticated all at once. No wonder why Senior Linger had fallen in love with him. With such a caliber, anyone can fall for him. Out of the blue, Zung patted his back and consoled him that there were some people in the world which no one could win against. To his astonishment, he said he was aware of Xiao Fan's sentiments. How did he perceive his true feelings? Xiao Fan had been trying hard to keep his feelings out of sight. It was astonishing that he was acquainted with everything. However, Xiao Fan didn't bother much about it. After all, he was Zung, to whom no one lent their ears. Even if he was aware of the whole matter, he couldn't pose a threat to him in any way. Moving into the night, everyone was fast asleep since they had spent an extremely worn-out day. Everything was peaceful and silent until, all of a sudden, Xiao Fan leaped out of his blanket. He was panting badly. It seemed as if he had witnessed a fretful dream. It was true. He got agitated by a horrific dream. In his dream, he saw an appalling scenario of a forest, fiery red, with blood drizzling from it. The ground had become covered with a river of gore. In the middle of the chaos, a man was standing. What made it even more grueling was that his hands were immensely bleeding. The scenario was horrendous enough to scare him to death. He finally got hold of his senses as he realized that it was just a wicked dream. Though he felt better after a while, he still felt inquisitive about the dream. It was probably the second time he had been through the terror in the last few months. What made him even more curious was that he couldn't discern the person's face whose hands were bleeding. He could only vaguely recall his appearance, but it mimicked his own getup. Was that cursed man really himself? Amidst these apprehensions, he couldn't get back to sleep. After multiple failed attempts to sleep, he got up and visited the garden for some fresh air. The garden looked extremely appealing at night. The flowers which radiated their freshness under sunlight were still blooming brightly. Each one of the flowers in the garden was emitting a unique luminescence. Nature felt tranquil, with a light refreshing breeze and the clouds partially sheathing over the moon. The dingy moonlight felt enticing when it enlightened the flowers. His attention was stuck on a desolated flower which was trying hard to gleam like all the other flowers. It had devoted all its strength to give out luminosity. Xiao Fan was lost in its beauty when, all of a sudden, he saw a beautiful hand approach the flower. Out of the blue, the flower was plucked by a lady, who then held it close to herself in order to relish its fragrance. Xiao Fan was staggered. He got enraged at that girl's move. That flower was blooming and blossoming so beautifully. Why did that girl have to pluck it off? He reprimanded her for ending its life so ruthlessly. The girl was taken aback by his claim and apprehensiveness for the flower. She stepped closer to Xiao Fan and ridiculed him. According to her, it was an honor for the flower to be plucked by her enchanting hands and its fragrance being sniffed by her. Xiao Fan couldn't comprehend her puzzled statements. He was despised by the flower being killed. It was unsentimental to kill a flower. How would it feel the happiness of the honor brought to him by the lady if it died? Instead, it would be sad. Xiao Fan related the dewdrops on its petals to tears of agony. The girl felt amused by his childish conduct. She laughed at him in ridicule, which deeply embarrassed Xiao Fan. That pure soul was just trying to save the life of a flower. There wasn't anything foolish or childish about it. Being sentimental was a moral value that not everyone was bestowed with. However, he ignored her mockery since he was profoundly caught up in the blossoming beauty of the night. The luscious flowers took him into an ima imaginary life of flashbacks. A long time ago, he witnessed a similar night. An enchantingly beautiful girl was standing, encompassed by hundreds of fragrant flowers in a forest. The melodious breeze was adding to the beauty of that night in a similar manner. The dewdrops on the petals of flowers were sparkling under the moonlight. The only dissimilarity was that the girl was Xiao Fan's all-time favorite, Senior Linger. He sank so deep into the flashbacks that even the girl became puzzled. She told him that the whole city called her beautiful when she smiled since her childhood. Xiao Fan agreed with her. She really was beautiful. 
To his surprise, the girl again ridiculed him. She said that men like him were all the same. They never let go of an opportunity to flirt with a girl. Perplexed by her weird and absurd attitude, Xiao Fan sought permission to leave. Even before he could surpass the confines of the garden, she called him out and asked for his name. Xiao Fan hesitantly told his name and ran from the spot. Maybe the reason behind his hesitancy was a glimpse of linger in her eyes. He couldn't gaze into her eyes for long because her beauty made him recall his senior. She was alluring, just like her, with long, lustrous hair and dazzling eyes glistening under the moonlight. Xiao Fan never dared to confess his feelings for Linger, probably because he considered himself unworthy. Senior Linger deserved someone smart like Qi Hao. Xiao Fan didn't consider himself comparable to his seniors. His worth was equivalent to the flower plucked by that girl since they were both ordinary and humble. Xiao Fan left, but the girl stood there still, admiring the captivating fragrance of the flower. All of a sudden, she was interrupted by a woman, referring to her as Bi Yao. She told Bi that those four people were disciples of the Qingyun sect, out of which she was only acquainted with Qi Hao. She perceived the other three as junior disciples. Bi uttered that she knew that dumb kid Xiao Fan's name who ran away. While talking to her, Bi was continuously sniffing the mesmerizing flower. The woman was staggered as she hadn't seen Bi admire a flower's beauty for a long. Bi's eyes portrayed something fishy. Anyhow, the night passed. The next day dawned and the team of four embarked on their journey towards the Kongsang Mountain. Though they had begun traveling early in the morning, they reached their destination pretty late. The sun was about to set, and the sky was turning orange. It was high time they should have searched for the ancient Bat Colony Cavern. It was all Xiao Fan's fault. His amateur flying cost them a long span. He realized his mistake soon, and apologized to them all for the inconvenience. Senior Chi Hao bucked him up since he had performed much better than the previous trip. Eventually, they found a cave in the mountain where they could rest. It was cold in the mountains, but they managed to keep themselves warm with extra layers of clothing. After getting some rest, they headed towards the colony cavern. On their way, they were encountered by a horrific bat. The bat was all set to attack them, but owing to their courageous leader, Chi Hao's efforts, it was shooed away. However, it still managed to chip off a part of Zeng's fans. It seemed a pretty treacherous creature because it left some black filth on his fan. Zeng discerned it to be poison. Senior Chi Hao instructed them to be cautious ahead, as they could meet an even greater attack from multiple bats. Since their safety was Chi Hao's responsibility, he unsheathed the Liu Hei mirror, which was the divine weapon of the Qingyun sect. He instructed everyone to remain under the illumination of the mirror, since it would protect them from vicious attacks. As they trekked forward into the jungle, they faced a petrifying attack from a vast community of bats. The scenario was blood-curdling. They were all appalled to see hundreds of bats surrounding them. Some of them were hovering in the air, while some were hanging upside down from the trees. The ones hanging were immensely spooky since they resembled humans. All of them were now counting on their senior Chi Hao. They weren't sturdy and canny enough to deal with the attack all by themselves. Only Chi Hao was an intelligent one out of them who could figure some way out. He strictly ordered them to stay under the mirror's protection. Only in that way could they remain safe and sound. Zung put forward his opinion that bats usually don't attack humans unless provoked to do so. Just as he said so, one of the fiery bats banged on their protective shield. Everyone was startled. Chi Hao told them to grab their weapons in case they may be required. He reassured them again and again that they would hopefully remain out of danger if they stayed confined to the mirror shield. They tried to divert their attention from the spine-chilling bats in order to remain calm and content. Out of the blue, Xiao Fan felt a pinching sensation on his arm. His heart almost missed a beat as he thought one of the daunting bats might have entered their shield. But as he gave it a look... It was Senior Lu. She was trembling with terror. She had pinched Xiao Fan as an indication that she required protection and emotional support. Xiao Fan was dumbfounded all of a sudden. It was hard to regard someone as strong and robust as Senior Lu could be cast down with fear. In the aspect of standing firm against trepidation, he was ahead of all of them. At least he was proficient in keeping himself calm in calamitous circumstances. Even in situations of extreme peril, he had enough emotional and physical vigor to protect Senior Lu. She sheltered herself behind Xiao Fan's back, putting all her faith in his ability to protect her. As the next morning's sun rose, everyone sighed in relief. All the creepy bats dispersed away, clearing the path for sunlight to pass through the trees. Senior Chi Hao guided his team out of the gloomy, haunting forest into bright daylight. They found some rocks where they rested for a while. Everyone was safe and sound, but they were disgusted by the gross blood stains on their clothes. The three boys were sitting close to each other, but Senior Lu was segregated from them. She was sitting on a rock a few meters away. They all approached closer to her and noticed that she was about to explode from the feeling of abhorrence. She was extremely nauseated with the bloodstains on her dress and body. Anyhow, 
The boys tried to comfort her and they continued with their voyage. A few miles into the journey, they came across a group of four participants trekking opposite to them. Both the teams paused counter to each other. A senior member from the opposing team greeted them. He presumed them to be disciples from the Ching Yun sect. What a genius man he was. His assumption was an absolute verity. He introduced himself as Fak Xiang. The three people who accompanied him were Disciple Fashion, Disciple Yan Hong, and Disciple Li Shun. They belonged to the Tianyin Temple. Senior Chi Hao greeted them from the other team and presented a short introduction of himself and his team. Chi Hao had heard great things about the residents of Tianjin Temple. They were a rare talent of the millennium. Now that he had finally met them, they seemed even more outstanding than their stories. Fa Qiang's expressions were dubious. There was something fishy going on in his mind as he saw Xiao Fan. It appeared as if he was already acquainted with him, and he had been searching for him for a long time. Li Shun passed on a derogatory remark about the Qing Yun sect's disciples. He jeered at them for being disheveled. Those who claimed to be the leaders of justice were roaming around bedraggled. It was an amusing sight for the Tianyins. Zheng raged to see him mocking their sect. Qi Hao was amazed at his claim when Li said that the Qing Yun sect disciples couldn't live up to their mark. He explained their stance that the so-called egoistic reputation was attributed to their sect by some haters. They strongly condemned self-centeredness. Chi Hao cleared their misconceptions with immense politeness, but it seemed as if they had some other intentions in their minds. I asked them to wait outside the cave, otherwise they would get themselves into huge trouble. When they weren't conceding with chivalrous conduct, Chi Hao converted his softness into coldness. He invited them for a battle which would be self-explanatory for their strengths. Out of the blue, Lu emerged into the scene. She stood in front of Chi Hao and unsheathed her Tianya sword. She drew Yan Hong from the antagonistic team for a fight in order to test their strengths. Yan Hong was standing behind Li. She was perplexed when all of a sudden, Lu invited her to draw out her sword. She had nothing to do with the issue. It was put forward by Li, so he was the one obliged to deal with it. All of a sudden, the event took a peculiar turn when Zheng put his five cents in to calm down the situation. He started babbling about the bats they just encountered back in the forest, explaining them as daunting beats. Fashan from the other team said that they had faced a similar situation. Probably those bats were the permanent residents of the ancient bat colony cavern. He said that the bats were in huge numbers, which unfortunately propelled them to retreat from the forest. Surprisingly, he pointed at Li and Yan, saying that they were the first ones to reverse their steps when they saw the bats. Poor Li was ridiculed in front of the Qingyun disciples. His sturdy impression was shattered completely. According to Faxiang, the bats were ferocious and bloodthirsty, ready to kill anyone in front of them. That's why they had to retreat. As a reply, Chi Hao ranted that the, they had been on the mission of exterminating those bats the whole night in order to bring ease to the natives. They had killed many but couldn't completely extinguish them. The bloodstains on their clothes were a result of that extermination mission. Fashan was awestruck at their valiant motive. It was heroic of them to stand up firmly against such rapacious beasts. He expressed his amazement at their impressive act. The two pompous disciples, Li and Yan, stood behind their seniors awkwardly since their boasts had been uncovered. Faxing invited Chi Hao and his team members for a resting day since they had been traveling for a long time. He said that they could together visit the Bat Colony Cavern again the next day. Since he was a senior, Chi Hao respected his opinion and accepted the invitation. After a small bat session, everyone headed for resting since they had been extremely exhausted for the past few days. It was decided that they would meet at the same spot the next day in order to visit the forest. As their span of rest ended, they all gathered at a spot near the ancient Bat Colony Cavern. It was almost midday, with the sun shining bright at their heads, but the area surrounding the cave was gloomy. A few onerous bats were flying outside the cave too, in order to warn about the threat inside. Everyone was petrified by the somberly daunting cave. Senior Chi Hao instructed his team to be extremely cautious, since any type of menace could be faced by them inside. Everyone was ordered to keep their weapons handy, in case of unforeseen perilousness. As they unsheathed their high-end weapons, Xiao Fan got downcasted with embarrassment because his fire poker was inferior to all of their artillery. He was hesitant to take it out, as the disciples from the Tianyin sect might look down upon the Qingyun descendants. His dilettante stick might bring disgrace to his master. His restlessness was noticed by Li, and he asked him why he hadn't brought his weapon along. However, his inquisitiveness was set aside when all of a sudden, an intense luminosity nearly blinded them. It radiated from Senior Lu's Tianya sword. Everyone was gobsmacked by her spectacular sword. She summoned everyone's attention to announce that she would be heading first. Actually, the motive behind such a sudden call was to divert their attention from Xiao Fan's peculiar stick weapon. It was extremely nice of her to make an effort for her junior's respect. As they made their way inside the cave, it kept on getting gloomier. The light became so dull that even their seniors got apprehensive. 
Qi Hao took out the divine mirror and protected them all with its shield. Since Xiao Fan was the most inexperienced of them all, he fell behind in the trek. Out of the blue, Fa Qiang buzzed in Xiao Fan's ear that he could follow in his footsteps if he felt intimidated. His dominating conduct made Xiao Fan uneasy and fidgety. Was he just imagining his overprotectiveness, or was it a verity? His apprehensiveness wasn't baseless because Fa Qiang belonged to the sect of his master Pu Ji. Maybe he was intentionally trying to get closer to him. Maybe he was aware of the fact that Xiao Fan was an apprentice of Master Pu Ji. It was quite plausible that he might have a message to convey. While all those thoughts passed through his mind, he suddenly felt his foot linger on something mushy. As he looked down, he screeched in disgust. His shriek was loud enough to perplex the whole team. They got disquieted as if he had met a trap, while in reality he had stepped on poop. Everyone was grossed out, especially Li and Yan. They leered at him as if he was some kind of filth. Surely his destiny wasn't benevolent that day. Apparently, Senior Lu had been bestowing him with extra attention, but his fate proved his incompetence as he was stuck in filth as soon as they entered the cave. Earlier, it was only his peculiar weapon, but now he has to proceed with the burden of filth. Out of the blue, they encountered a huge army of bats approaching them. The bats had almost covered the whole circumambience. Panic took over all of them. Their steps suddenly stopped. They couldn't advance in such a daunting environment. Out of them all, only Faxiang stood solidified. He calmed them down as it was unlikely for the beast to attack them during midday hours. He took out a small blue-colored orb from his pocket, which radiated luminosity. It definitely appeared to be something extraordinary. It got everyone awestruck due to its divine gleam. Even his own disciples were unfamiliar with it. One of them inquired out of curiosity if it was a reincarnation orb, to which he replied that it actually was a kind of it. Xiao Fan was taken aback when he got to know that it was a unique reincarnation orb, because he recalled the orb given to him by the monk to be similar. The only dissimilarity was in the color. It could be possible that his orb was also a reincarnation. As they advanced deeper into the cave, they faced something uncanny. The cave, which manifested itself as a single tunnel up till now, had unexpectedly ended in a diversion with two entrances. In between those two entrances, a mystic note was engraved onto a huge stone. It appeared to be written by fiends, who considered themselves as a divine entity. Lee found it extremely lame and hideous. It was strange how the fiends were so overconfident about their powers. Faxing was befuddled because he had heard from his master Pu Hong that 800 years ago, the same stone with the note written on it was smashed into two by one of their seniors. How is it possible that the stone was intact again? Lu pointed out that the bottom of the stone had a crack while the upper end with the note was intact. It meant that it had been repaired by someone. When it came to repairing a stone with such a hideous note, it could be no one else but the fiends themselves. If they had repaired it, then it was immensely plausible that they still dwelled in that cave. Since Fa Xiang had knowledge about the cave's history, Qi Hao asked him about the split in the cave. His knowledge could have helped them decide upon the direction, but unfortunately it was beyond his ken. His master had only mentioned that the split existed since the time of the war between the evil and the righteous. Other than that, he was alienated from it. Since it was impracticable to discern the monacious side, they decided to split their group into two. The Tianyin disciples were elected to investigate the right side of the cave, and the Qingyun disciples were chosen for the contradictory side. If any of them encountered the fiends, they were to shout as a signal to the contrary team. The plan was presented by Qi Hao, and everyone else found it implementable, and thus agreed to it. Senior Qi Hao gathered his team under the divine Liuhe mirror and headed towards the left entrance, while Fa Xiang led his team towards the right entrance. Zooming into the journey of the right-sided team, they trekked quite a few miles deep, safe and sound, under the shield of the mirror. Xiao Fan was perturbed since it had been a long time since they left the other team, which meant they would be poles apart from them. If any of the team ran into fiends, would the other one be able to hear their shrieks? Before the negative thoughts dominated his mind, he refueled his motivation. He was a disciple of the Qing Yun sect and he had to make his master proud. Even if they confronted fiends, he would fight them with all his vigor. Just as they were marching passionately, they heard some strange noises. Those noises depicted the presence of another entity other than the four of them. To calm down his team, Senior Chi Hao instructed them to remain under the shield of the mirror. As long as they were sheltered, they couldn't be harmed. Despite multiple attempts to keep them contented, he failed because the sounds were extremely alarming. All of a sudden, Xiao Fan's footsteps quivered. Within the next instant, he tripped over as he lost his balance. Senior Lu rushed towards him in apprehensiveness. He was viciously attacked by the fiends. They were extremely cunning because they had attacked from beneath the ground, due to which their shield couldn't protect them. Xiao Fan started coughing up blood, but didn't lose courage. Qi Hao enforced an emergency defense attack against the fiends, but the problem was that the fiends were attacking secretly. Their actual location couldn't be discerned. In that way, 
it was not viable to fight them efficiently. Nevertheless, Ji Hao took out his sword and started swooshing it in all directions, whereas Xiao Fan still couldn't help himself stand up after the attack. He continuously coughed up blood. His condition was deteriorating with each passing instant. As time flew, Xiao Fan lost track of his companions because he couldn't move. His friends had disappeared while defending against the fiends. Now he wasn't even under the shelter of the Divine Mirror. He was all alone, stuck in pitch darkness. It was slowly getting suffocating in there. All he could hear was the ghostly howling and crackling of the fiends. The enemies didn't even reveal their true appearances, and neither was their number perceivable. They enforced all the terror with their phantasmal roars. Were they all around him? Was that how spine-chilling they were? They had scared the shit out of him, but Xiao Fan didn't let go of the silver lining of hope. He managed to keep himself content. It was the time to bring out his true valor. As his courage replenished, he stood up and railed at them for being cowards since they were hiding their true appearances. He called them out for a vigorous battle. Though he was separated from his peers, he had to stand up for his life. He couldn't just sit there and let down his seniors. It seemed as if the fiends took his reprimand seriously. As a sign of their existence, they revealed a part of their face out of the dark. A wraith-like mouth with spectral sharp teeth appeared. Suddenly, a creepy voice called out to him that he wasn't going to live for long. It was time for his departure from the world. The voice was ghoulish enough that it seemed to be coming straight from hell. However, Xiao Fan kept himself calm by assuming it to be a mere bluff. He once again asked the fiends to reveal their full appearance if they were sturdy enough to fight the righteous people. Apparently, he kept on giving out warnings, but deep down he was immensely agitated. He could feel his legs shuddering with panic. After all, he was an ordinary junior disciple just as typical as his name. He was the person who couldn't dare to confess his love to his lover due to his inferiority. Once again, he got caught up in Linger's flashbacks. He recalled how she was sobbing for him when he got injured during the tournament. She was begging her father to save him. Xiao Fan wasn't in his senses at that moment, but he knew she was crying for him. His injuries had dismayed her. Even his death would have been worth it if she cried for him. Would she still feel the same misery if he died right there in the cave? No. In order to cherish her agony at his death, he must make his way back to her. Merely for the sake of his love, he had to go back. Because he was lost in his dreams, he didn't yell at them for a while. Suddenly, the fiends themselves called him out. Out of the blue, an extremely appalling and haunting face appeared in front of him. The fiends had finally reflected on their look. They were no less than monstrous creatures with deep, googly eyes. Their foreheads portrayed some strange marks, and their ears were even colossal than the whole face. In a harrowing voice, one of them asked him to politely give his blood. Otherwise, they could use other daunting means to suck it out of him and strangle him to death. Xiao Fan hadn't seen him since it appeared from behind him. That grotesque creature got hold of Xiao Fan and pricked his body with its wetted nails and bit his back in order to suck out his blood. It gulped out almost all of his blood without granting him a chance to escape. Xiao Fan had no idea what was happening to him. He felt all his blood rush towards the site where the grisly fiend had fixed its teeth. His body was getting lighter and lighter as the blood rushed out of him. The meager energy he was left with was also draining. The leftover strength wasn't sufficient even to help him move an inch aside. He felt drowsy, as if shadiness was obliterating the few gleams of light around him. The endless gloominess encompassed him, and he felt as if he was floating in a vast sea. His consciousness was fading. He could see his soul rushing out of him. Was it really the end of his meaningless life? Was that how he was going to die? Within his somnolent world, he sensed his senior linger approaching him apprehensively. All of a sudden, he remembered that he couldn't die there. He had to die in front of his senior in order to witness her mourning. Even if he was destined to die, he had to reach his senior's side and die in front of her. The love of his seniors made him regain perception. He recalled that Master Puji had demonstrated to him the blood-devouring technique, which he instructed to be used only in situations of life and death. He instantly took out his sword and stabbed it into the, the field, sucking out his blood. As that fiend lost his power, Xiao Fan set himself free and rushed immediately. Since a huge portion of his blood had been devoured, he didn't have much strength remaining. Thus, he stumbled just a few steps ahead. He still didn't have an idea of what had happened and how he retrieved himself from the near-death experience. In a trice, he heard the pattering of footsteps approaching him. As the tapping neared, a graveling sound of a grumpy man could also be heard. Instantaneously, a man emerged from somewhere out of the pitch darkness. He was babbling hot-headedly about how an ordinary disciple from the Qingyun sect pulled through the ferocious blood-sucking attack by Jiang Laosan, one of the mightiest fiends. Just about a few moments ago, Jiang was devouring Xiao Fan's blood, and he almost strangled him to death. But a trice later, the situation was completely reversed. Zhang's dried-out appearance depicted that his own blood had been completely guzzled down. 
How on earth was it credible for a novice junior disciple from the Qing Yun sect to execute the blood-devouring technique? The only plausibility that could account for this turn of events was Xiao Fan being an apostle of one of the holy sects of the cults. It was quite odds-on for him to be similar in competency to them, because none of the righteous disciples could ever execute a blood-devouring technique. To clear away his objections, the man directly inquired Xiao Fan about his association with any of the blood-devouring sects. Xiao Fan was terrified by his interrogation. He had vowed to his master Pu Ji that he would never unfold the verity of the unique skill he was taught by him. Moreover, he didn't even know he had used the blood-devouring technique on the bloodsucker behind his back. The whole process of breaking himself loose was coincidental. His intellect was jeopardized due to loss of blood. It wasn't practicable for him to make up a plan against the hideous monster, whom he hadn't even visualized. His breakthrough was a sequel of Senior Linger's love and affection. The spontaneous vigor that insinuated into his body all of a sudden was an outcome of his desire to reunite with Linger before the tragic death that awaited him. Thus, he politely refused to answer any of the objections posed by the man. He claimed to be unfamiliar with the blood-devouring process and technique. The man was shrewd enough that he didn't trust any of Xiao Fan's claims. It was clearly evident that Xiao Fan had devoured Jiang's blood. If he wasn't the one who executed it, then who killed Jiang? Xiao Fan was taken aback when he was held accountable for killing a bloodsucker on his back. As he turned around to verify the presence of the bloodsucker, he almost jumped out of his skin. A spine-chilling beast had been sucking out his blood for quite a long span, and he didn't even notice the monster. Zhang's eerie appearance has scared him to death. Thousands of apprehensions ran through Xiao Fan's mind. How did he kill such a menacing monster? It was unbelievable for him because he never considered himself worthy of anything. Nevertheless, the proof of his spectacular strength was in front of him. Even the man was startled at his puzzled expression. He couldn't comprehend the backstory of how it all happened. However, the foremost task to be performed was to get rid of the canny Qing Yun sect disciple. He aimed his sword at Xiao Fan in order to kill him, but his move was counteracted by an immensely impactful, thundering stab. The impact was superimposed with a strong gleam, which the person behind the heroic act couldn't be discerned. After a while, as the intensity of the gleam dimmed out, it was revealed that Lu Shueki had used her Tianya sword in order to protect Xiao Fan. If it wasn't for the timely return of Xiao Fan's companions, he would have been crippled by the fiends. Senior Chi Hao appreciated Xiao Fan's efforts against the fiends. They had driven the enemies back at their end as well, which meant the Qing Yun sect had proved their aptness. The fiends were forced to surrender in front of them. The man who was attempting to kill Xiao Fan was curiosity struck by their immense vigor. The fiends had ingeniously planned beforehand to triumph over the Qing Yun disciples. They made a clever move to defeat the Liu He mirror shield by attacking them from underneath. However, the disciples turned out to be extraordinarily vigorous. When the man had lost all hopes of defeating them, he rushed away in order to save himself. While fleeing, he mumbled that he wasn't a coward. He was just rushing to summon his master and the rest of the soldiers. The situation took an anomalous turn when the man was confronted by his senior fiends. Among his seniors was a wicked lady and two sidekicks of hers. She abashed the man for fleeing away cowardly from a few incompetent youngsters of the Qing Yun sect. He was compelled to feel guilty of letting the youngsters go to the canyon. Since the man was alone, she asked him about Jiang. She was astonished when he told him that Jiang was murdered by those teens. She attributed the loss of Jiang's life to his carelessness. The seniors sighed in despair as now they would all be held accountable for his improvidence. Their master wouldn't grant them amnesty if he found out about Jiang's death and their disgraceful defeat at the hands of Qing Yun disciples. One of her sidekicks stepped ahead and presented his naive school of thought on the issue. According to him, they could still seize the youngsters and present them to their master, who would then appreciate their skillfulness. It seemed as if he was unaware of the delicate situation and the intense competitiveness of the Qing Yun disciples. How could they get hold of those kids so easily, when even the most professional bloodsucker of their team couldn't do it? His insolence and foolishness couldn't be endured by Lu. She had zero tolerance for cheekiness. Thus, she called him out as an ugly, ugly freak and threatened to kill him instantaneously if he kept on unfolding his mindlessness. Lu always portrayed a calm and contented personality. She seldom used to comment on useless issues, but whenever she vocalized, her words were sharp enough to hurt anybody. The man whom she verbally attacked appeared to be extremely self-conscious. He couldn't put up with someone commenting on his physical appearance. The way he infuriated her remarks made it clear that being called ugly extremely offended him. Boiling in anger, he swooshed his sword at Lu in order to kill her right there. However, to his astonishment, his move was wonderfully counteracted by Senior Chi Hao's ice sword. Zeng was standing beside Chi Hao, and was in awe as he witnessed his spectacular move. Though Chi Hao had admirably blocked his attack, he was taken aback to see bloodstains on his sword. Not only was his sword overblown by the fiend, 
but his body had subsumed a malefic aura by the powerful attack. The fiend set forth yet another impactful attack at them, but this time, Chi Hao's ice sword couldn't block it because of being overworked. Thus, he instructed Zung to counteract it with his sword. Zung was already keyed up by the fiend's strange, fierce red eyes, but he managed to stay contented and courageous. To everyone's surprise, he had also succeeded in dismissing the blitz. Now both of them were out of strength to counteract further attacks. Lu came forward in order to take care of any further wicked tricks posed by the fiends. Just as she was about to unsheathe her Tianya sword, Xiao Fan patted her back and asked her to stay behind. He told her that he would resist the further bombardment while, while the rest of them could go and take care of the attacking front. Lu warned him of the malicious aura, but his intentions didn't weaken. There was a ground reason for his courageousness. As his seniors possessed divine magical weapons, it would be an ignominy if their swords got tainted with vitriolic stains. On the other hand, Xiao Fan's fire poker was just as worthless as he considered himself to be. Thus it wouldn't make any difference if he got mutilated. Though it was admirable of Xiao Fan to contribute an equivalent endeavor as the rest of them, Lu didn't allow him to do so. She made him realize his poor foundation and low cultivation skills. On top of that, they all considered his weapon to be weird and ugly, which couldn't be relied on in such consequential circumstances. In spite of the fact that his fate had been supporting him ever since they embarked on the journey, it wasn't wise to contemplate a similar run of luck ahead. Assigning him with the duty of resisting the enemy's vicious strikes was similar to an enforced suicide. Lu was spitting out some awkward facts, which deeply hurt Xiao Fan's feelings, but he couldn't refute them. It wasn't a civilized behavior to invalidate Lu's concerns, but Xiao Fan definitely had the right to reason with her, so he did. Although he was weak and feeble, his debility couldn't give grounds for staying back in times of danger. It was disgraceful to let a girl stand in front of him in demanding situations. If he felt no shame in sheltering behind a girl, it was high time he should look down upon himself. As a dignified disciple of the Qing Yun sect, it was his moral obligation to stand firm against the enemy and fight till the last breath in order to bring honor to his sect. He enthusiastically vowed to perform his duty righteously with all his vigor. It seemed as if Lu was somewhat persuaded by his stance. Though unwilling to do so, she allowed him to take her place at the defensive front. Xiao Fan stepped forward and called out to Fiend for a combat. The Fiend wasn't as naive as he appeared. He had joined his sword strike with a unique flaring ambush, which originated from his peculiar googly eyes. The flare attack was onerous enough to scare away anyone, but Xiao Fan remained steadfast. As the blazing flicker neared, he counteracted it with his unique black weapon. Astonishingly, his, his circumambience became vague due to a dusty storm resulting from his sword's defensive move. Nobody could comprehend the situation inside that storm. His seniors and the enemy thought he was blasted to death. Whereas inside the storm, Xiao Fan stood up and examined his body parts to delineate any injury. To his surprise, he was absolutely safe and sound. He felt no pain at all. He took a glance at his weapon, which was as scratchless as it was prior to the attack. Slowly the smut settled down and he became visible to everyone around him. His peers were glad and grateful to see him unharmed, while the fiend was perplexed at the failure of his ambush. Nevertheless, the enemy didn't surrender. He pledged to keep shooting until he accomplished victory. However, all his attacks were efficiently blocked by Xiao Fan's uncanny weapon. He had endured a multitude of impactful charges, but he still stood unscathed and firm in front of the enemy. His seniors were immensely proud of him for putting up such a phenomenal show. While he kept the fiend busy, they planned to attack them from the other side. The old fiend's companion abashed him for lack of competency. He regarded his, his demonic eye as a feudal entity, which couldn't even stand against a junior Ching Yun disciple. He was afraid of being laughed at if the word got out in the sect. It was slowly becoming implausible for them to keep up their glory as the mighty evils, just like their master Black Heart had been doing since ages. The old man was deeply offended by his disparaging remarks, thus he challenged him to take his position as the attacker and prove his capability. The other fiend accepted the challenge and advanced forward in order to portray his murderous abilities. Within his hand, he had a unique fan which staggered Zung. Seeing Zung's apprehensiveness, his friends asked him for elucidation of the fan's specialty, since he was knowledgeable of such stuff. Because he seemed to have a keen and knowledgeable eye, the fiend warned Zung to convince his friends to surrender and stay out of trouble. Zung abashed him for brandishing his fan as something wickedly onerous. Just because he had a fan didn't mean he was tough enough to be undefeatable. If that was the case, then Zung himself had a fan too. Although it was bitten by the bats, it could still depict toughness according to his perspective. Zung had totally lost his mind. He was abashing the fiend nonstop. Senior Chi Hao tried to silence his anger by showing him the painting of a mountain river and an eagle on the fan. The vividness of the painting posed a question mark. Could it be Feng Yue's magical weapon? The fan of the river and mountain? 
They were criticizing and mocking his weapon openly in front of the fiend, which intensely enraged him. He instantaneously lifted his fan in order to cast a spell. To everyone's astonishment, it actually was a fan of mountains and rivers. His spell had summoned heavy thunder and rumbles. Just when the impactful boulder was about to crash Xiao Fan, Chi Hao alerted him and pulled him aside. Fortunately, Chi Hao's heroic efforts saved Xiao Fan's life. Xiao Fan was grateful for his senior and his solicitude. Since the fan had proved its robustness, they all got hypervigilant and sought options to counteract and shield themselves. Senior Chi Hao once again took aid from the divine Liu He mirror and called for his team to enter the shelter. They all gathered together under the enlightened mirror, but when Xiao Fan looked around, he found out that Liu wasn't with them. He yelled and immediately reported it to Chi Hao. A while later, they came to know that Liu was outside the shield, right in front of the enemy. She had unsheathed her Tianya sword and was all geared up for a tough confront. The roar and rumble of her ferocious sword had staggered everyone. Even the fiends were puzzled. Merely by virtue of a single stab by the Tianya sword, the fiend's mystifying magical fan was destroyed. He burst into tears to see his favorite weapon croaked. Zung mocked him for the broken fan. They both were on the same boat. The fiend's anger was boundless. He was ready to go to any extent in order to avenge Lu. Using his broken fan, he casted an immensely high-level spell and swooshed the fan straight at Lu's face. Unfortunately, her lips lacerated due to collision and started bleeding. Slowly, her strength started deteriorating. She couldn't even support herself standing. Her steps staggered. Xiao Fan was deeply anguished by her pain. Within no time, she started coughing up blood. Xiao Fan rushed towards her and took her aside for some rest. He even offered to use his magical energy to heal her wounds, but she refused. Xiao Fan was well aware of his meager strength. His cultivation was hardly one thousandth of Lu's cultivation. Thus, it was better to leave her on her own, rather than insisting to heal her with his magical strength. They both quietly sat at a corner and cherished Senior Chi Hao, and Zeng fought the fiend splendidly. Xiao Fan regretted his insubstantial abilities. If he was as valorous as his seniors, then he too would have protected his companions like them. The feeling of mortification was evident by his expressions, thus Lu quite easily discerned his feelings. She consoled him that vigor was based on two entities. The first one was cultivation, which could efficiently be enhanced by rigorous training. The other one was courage, which came straight from within the heart. Since Xiao Fan had already driven back that ugly bloodsucker and the fiend, his courage couldn't be doubted. Moreover, he never hesitated in stepping forward during an immensely menacing situation. During their venture, he had demonstrated multiple illustrations of valor and intrepidness. Getting admiration from Lu got him teary-eyed, and his motivation replenished. Meanwhile, the fiends had their glances fixed onto the Tianya sword. It was the same sword against which their grandmaster and master couldn't sustain. Tianya's sword was that unique divine weapon which housed powers of the heavens. It was just as grandeur in reality as it was rumored to be. What bothered them the most was the fact that a mere youngster was assigned the ownership of such a magnificent weapon. They could defeat the Qingyun disciples if only they snatched its ownership. In order to do so, the senior female fiend sneakily approached Lu. Lu and Xiao Fan were lost so deep into their conversation that they didn't notice her coming. All of a sudden, the fiend dropped a long chain onto her and tied her up completely. Lu couldn't even move her hands. Lu thumped her feet tempestuously, but it was of no use. The battle had enraged to a lethal extent. Lu's beating and tapping were of no use because the chains she was shackled with were the unique immortal binding chains. The fiend bragged that she had prepared them, especially for self-willed kids like her. Xiao Fan tried to counteract the fiend by attacking from behind her jackals, but he failed badly. The chains had blocked his weapon. He had dedicated all his surveillance towards saving Senior Lu. He didn't even notice a peculiar jeopardy behind his back. Since Lu was facing towards it, she visualized two fiends flying behind Xiao Fan's back, all geared up to attack him. She warned him immediately to turn around and defend himself, but it was too late. The fiends had already bombarded him. Xiao Fan stumbled and got badly wounded with blood dripping from his arm. Despite the immense pain, he stood up and assured Lu that he was coming to rescue her. The fiends ridiculed him for dreaming of saving his senior with such scanty strength. They sneered at him for being arrogant, but Xiao Fan didn't lend them an ear. He remained firm in his stance that evil could never defeat the righteous. The battle progressed, with Xiao Fan putting up a good show against the fiends. Lu was anxiously observing the hot-headed encounter. While she was busy there, the female fiend pulled out her Tianya sword from its scabbard. Lu was staggered when she realized her sword had been acquired by the wicked fiend. She had put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in order to win the ownership of that sword. It was against her adroitness to lose it to a fiend, but she was helpless. Being shackled up, she couldn't do anything to save her sword. Meanwhile, the other two fiends, Niana and Wild Dog, were kept occupied by Xiao Fan's resistance. 
In the end, they deduced that fighting Xiao Fan was similar to cracking a nut with a sledgehammer. Both of them blamed one another for the failure of their tactics. Seeing the two of them playing the blame game rather than attacking Xiao Fan, their senior reprimanded them. Her attention diverted from Lu towards her sidekicks. Taking advantage of the situation, Lu utilized her cultivation spirit to break loose from the shackles. She sneaked behind the fiend and grasped her Tianya sword back. The fiend almost jumped out of the skin when she found out that Lu had set herself free. Without wasting another instant, Lu counteracted them with her ferocious sword. Her attack was impactful enough to damage the immortal binding chains. Along with that, she had managed to rescue Xiao Fan from the other two fiends. The fiends couldn't put up with such an ignominy. The senior fiend was infuriated due to her damaged chains, while the sidekicks were enraged because of being mocked for ugliness. Each of them aimed to avenge the Qingyun disciples for personal reasons, in addition to a single collective motto of glorifying their sect. Instantaneously, they bombarded them with attacks from the fans of Mountain and River, in addition to the Flare Blitz. However, all their efforts went to waste because the disciples were putting up a good show with their divine weapons. In order to enhance their impact, they modified their tricks and tactics and pounded them with yet another powerful magical spell. Senior Chi Hao was wise enough to comprehend beforehand that the Liu Hei mirror wasn't capable of shielding against the recasted spell. He ordered his peers to rush towards the bottomless pit, since that was the only safe option to hide. As Xiao Fan and Lu were closer towards the pit, they leaped into it without glancing inside. After jumping inside, they realized that they were caught inside an underground river. The fiend's attack was powerful enough that its rumbling and crackling could be sensed inside the water, too. They both directed themselves away from the origin of the attack, but somehow Xiao Fan got struck by a flash of the disastrous blazing blitz. The assault wounded him deeply. His veins were bleeding, with the blood slowly mixing into the water. He couldn't cope with the physical incursion, thus instantly lost consciousness, and his body started drowning. What made it more haunting was the fact that he was underground, where help was unlikely to arrive. Lu was all perplexed and anxious, seeing his condition deteriorating constantly. Her anxiousness became boundless when, all of a sudden, they encountered a waterfall. The waterfall was extremely petrifying since there wasn't an end to it. The pit they had jumped into was a bottomless one. Xiao Fan was ahead of her. The water was just about to wash him away into the pit. Lu was short of time. In order to prevent themselves from going down the waterfall, she supported herself with a small rock and held tightly onto Xiao Fan's arm. However, her posture couldn't last long because the fiend's bombardment was still ongoing. She was quivering due to the rumbling and crackling. Moreover, the pressure from the running water was also adding to the struggle of holding him back. The situation intensified to the extent that she was supporting Xiao Fan merely by seizing his shirt. However, she didn't lose hope and kept her grip firm. She kept on pulling harder and harder and eventually succeeded in retrieving him from the advancing front of the waterfall. They both were now away from the waterfall, but the danger had not subsided yet. They were still underwater. The river prior to the waterfall wasn't shallow either. Since she had lost all her strength in rescuing Xiao Fan, she couldn't keep herself floating, hence drowned deeper and deeper into the river along with Xiao Fan. It was peculiar how she didn't let go of his hand even for an instant. In fact, she gripped it even more forcefully. They kept on dipping deep until they hit the riverbed. As soon as they hit the ground, Xiao Fan started regaining consciousness. The first flashback that passed through his mind was of those moments when he was leaving the bamboo peak along with his seniors. He recalled all the good wishes by his master and senior Linger. A few moments later, he perceived a strange coldness that was absorbing the warmth of his body. The frost was so intense that it brought back all his lost senses. Soon he realized that he was underwater, lying on the riverbed. Looking around, he found that his fire poker was still in his hand. The situation took a strange turn when he witnessed hundreds of specters approaching him. Specters were the lost souls who couldn't qualify to move on to the afterlife. Their souls were destined to dwell there infinitely. He had no option but to shoo them away with his fire poker. Apparently, the specters seemed to be intimidated by his fire poker. Xiao Fan felt the need to lift his hand in order to scare away the specters with his stick, but his movement was resisted. Something was holding onto his hand, due to which he couldn't move it. As he apprehensively looked towards it, he was taken aback to see Senior Lu holding tightly onto his hand. She was lying unconscious on the ground, but her grip was as firm as ever. In return, he grasped her hand even firmer. Though she was unconscious apparently, her mind was pondering over something uncanny and bizarre. It was a dream in which she saw a ray of light emerge from pitch darkness. After going through endless darkness, her senses were slowly returning. Though she was surrounded by somberness all around, she was assured that there was someone besides her who was providing her warmth. That person was her only ray of light in the dullness. As her senses were returning, she felt her hand being held tightly, which was providing her warmth and comfort. 
As she gradually and gently opened her eyes, she witnessed Xiao Fan sitting next to her, holding her hand unwaveringly. All of a sudden, she felt uneasy and shoved him off. As she pulled herself away, she was attacked by a huge army of specters. Having no idea of what they were, she yelled at the top of her throat. In order to comfort her, Xiao Fan scared away the specters with his fire poker. Lu had hundreds of apprehensions in her mind. She couldn't comprehend anything. Since how long had she been blacked out? What were they doing underwater? Why was Xiao Fan holding her hand? Out of all the concerns, what uneased her the most was Xiao Fan holding her hands, which she considered creepy. Xiao Fan explained that it wasn't him who was holding her hands. She wasn't letting go of him. Since Lu had just recovered from a blackout, she didn't remember anything, thus considered him a liar. She was about to unsheathe her Tianya sword in order to teach him a lesson, but Xiao Fan managed to stop her. As he had been awake for quite some time, he could vividly recall the sequence of events that took place before their accident. He narrated the whole story of how she had saved him and ended up gripping his hands. Lu vaguely recalled the reality and thus agreed to put back her sword. In fact, she felt embarrassed for being the one who held his hand firmly for such a long time. However, helping her junior was fine. If she was endangered, Xiao Fan would have done the same. Thus, it was baseless to feel ashamed for holding his hands. As she gazed around, she saw the specters running away because of Xiao Fan's weapon. Impressed by its power, she asked him about its specifications. Xiao Fan replied that it was a fire poker, which his master had allotted him since he worked at the ovens. He regarded it as useless and powerless. However, Lu was astounded since she had been training hard under her master in order to, to acquire the divine Tianya sword, yet she lost to a fire poker. His ordinary fire poker had pissed her off. In order to calm down the atmosphere, he praised the Tianya sword, reminding her that she was the one who won the tournament with her divine weapon. Somehow, he unwillingly kept on pissing her off further. Eventually, she abashed him and challenged him to fly out of the water if his fire poker was strong enough. Xiao Fan felt petrified by his senior's pressure. She was getting outraged by everything he said. It was becoming troublesome for him to reply to any of her concerns. He hesitantly unfolded the verity that he had learned flying just before they had left the mountain. Thus, his skills weren't efficient and polished yet. Moreover, due to internal injuries, his strength had waned. Thus, he couldn't fly. Senior Lu felt content to know that she wasn't the only one who couldn't fly. Xiao Fan, who had stood against her Tianya sword with some random fire poker, couldn't fly as well. Setting aside their temperament, it was high time they should have investigated the surroundings in order to find some way out. Otherwise, they would eventually get sucked up by those wicked specters. They gathered the courage to get up and navigate the circumambience. They were incarcerated somewhere deep under the ground where there wasn't a single ray of light. The only way to visualize the surroundings was to utilize the gleam emitted from their divine weapons. Thus, they held the weapons high in their hands to make the most of their luminosity. They wouldn't have trekked even a few miles when Xiao Fan started panting and huffing all of a sudden. His skin gradually turned pale, indicating an ailment within his body. Lu offered to take a break, but he said he was fine. Within the next moment, he lost his balance and fell hard to the ground. As soon as he knocked down and passed out, the glow of his fire poker was diminished. Now Lu was all alone against the specters. Despite multiple attempts to scare them away with her ferocious Tianya sword, she failed. The sword didn't seem to have an impact on the bull-headed specters. They were slowly encompassing her from all directions. She perceived her death written by fate to commence somewhere deep in the haunting canyon. As a final attempt to save her life, she unsheathed her feral Tianya sword. The last resort was to utilize its power in order to drive away the wicked creatures. She began summoning the power of the heavens onto the tip of her sword. Its vigor was so intense that it even woke Xiao Fan up from the blackout. Lu was pleased to see him opening his eyes finally, but another staggering surprise awaited for them. Her sword had caused a vigorous underground earthquake due to which the ground imploded. The rumbling and crackling caused by the disaster were deafening. Unfortunately, the spot where Xiao Fan was lying on the ground burst apart first. In order to save him from falling deeper into the pit, Lu grasped his hand firmly. However, the quivering continued, due to which she couldn't save him. Instead, both of them fell into the abyss conjoined. Eventually, they collided with the ground of the apparently baseless pit, and an intense banging sound followed. The void they just stumbled into was even more spooky and creepy than the previous one. Lu sensed danger around her, but she was destitute. She couldn't leave Xiao Fan unattended since he had just recovered from a blackout. All of a sudden, she almost jumped out of her skin when she saw a creepy four-legged monster in front of her. The creature roared in anger as if it was all geared up to attack them. Though he appeared similar to a lion, his horns made him resemble a rhinoceros. The monster was sized colossally. Xiao Fan's senses weren't fully recuperated, but he also comprehended the oddly appearing creature to be some kind of a daunting monster. Lu was defenseless. 
The only weapon she owned was her Tianya sword, which seemingly didn't have an effect on the rapacious underground entities. Despite receiving an impactful blow from her Tianya sword, the monster persisted as steadfast as earlier. Instead, their futile efforts infuriated it. Its eyes turned fiery red, depicting extreme wrath and perilousness. There were a multitude of similar gigantic monsters in the surroundings, which would be summoned soon if they didn't drive away the one already present. The creature gradually advanced towards them. It was natural for them to retreat backward, but when they did, Xiao Fan felt something strange under his feet. He almost tripped over it. When he looked down towards his feet, he sighed leaf as it was just a branch of root extending from a huge tree. Though he didn't feel any further jeopardy, Lu wasn't convinced. She vividly recalled that there wasn't any tree behind them on their way down. Her sixth sense indicated clearly that something was wrong. Thus, she instructed Xiao Fan to keep his guard up. The next instant, Xiao Fan felt the branches of the tree lengthening and curling upon his arms. Gradually, the branches lengthened to the extent that they strangled him completely. He was roped to the tree by its ever-growing branches. Senior Lu yelled in horror. The danger was approaching them from both directions. The tree was expanding non-stop on one side while the monster was roaring on the other end. In between the two perils, Lu was all alone, panting in terror. She had no choice but to fight them off with all her strength. Before driving away the monster, she headed towards Xiao Fan in order to unchain him. However, before she could reach him, the monster neared her to the extent that it became essential to fight it off first. She aimed her divine weapon at it, but Xiao Fan restrained her. He expressed his concern that it was better for one of them as it would result in the loss of only one life. If both of them fought separately, they both could die. Because Senior Lu was the pride of Qingyun Mountain, she deserved to stay alive. At the same time, Xiao Fan was a mere loser whose life didn't matter much. Thus, it was better for him to remain at the advancing front. Nevertheless, she didn't lend an ear to his reasoning. She used her Tianya sword to unchain him. As expected, the voracious attack she attempted with her sword was spectacular. She managed to unfetter him in no time. She indeed was the pride of their sect. She was glad her efforts had released him from the shackles of the tree. However, the mighty tree was still intact behind it, and its branches were flourishing their way towards a second attack at Xiao Fan. Her attention was wholly invested in him. She almost forgot about the monster behind her. All of a sudden, the hot-headed boar smashed into her, jolting her far towards the other end of the pit. As Lu banged onto the wall of the abyss, it exerted its counteracting force, which made her tumble down onto the ground. Though she had been receiving continuous blows and attacks within the canyon, the boar's attack was uniquely impactful. It had almost crippled her to death. After that attack, she was assured of her death being near. Flashbacks of the contented time she spent in the bamboo peak with her master passed through her mind. She wanted to repay her master's selfless favors, but maybe that wasn't destined for her in the present life. With her squinted eyes, she witnessed Xiao Fan being tortured by the monstrous tree. The tree had enraged to the extent that it was about to swallow Xiao Fan down its horrifying, grotesque mouth with saw-edged teeth. The scene was extremely appalling for Lu to witness, but due to her drowsiness, she couldn't comprehend it vividly enough. She felt grieved for Xiao Fan and was ashamed of her incompetence, which caused her to be unable to rescue him. Being his senior, Protecting his life was her moral obligation. Meanwhile, Xiao Fan, who was just about to be engulfed by the tree, was ailing with frailty. His infirmity was restricting him from counteracting the horrific attack. However, when he saw his senior on the verge of life, he made a clear-cut commitment to himself that he was going to fight back till his last breath in order to save her. He drew out his weapon and directed its entire magical energy towards the tree. Astonishingly, it worked. The tree lost its vigor due to which Xiao Fan easily helped himself out of its torment. His fire poker radiated heat and luminosity due to the intense magical energy it housed. Its warmth was notably comforting for his damaged veins. Most of his internal injuries seemed to be cured by its solacing mellowness. Its gleam also intensified in a satisfying way, with its glow serving as a treat to his sore eyes. As Xiao Fan drove away his first target, he directed the poker toward the roaring boar. The boar was approaching him furiously. Its eyes fiercened with the redness of wrath. However, as soon as the magical energy sneaked into its horrendous body, its peak calmed down to some extent. It deliberately slowed down its nimble pace. It still continued roaring, but the roar no more housed the daunting intensity. A while later, the boar seemed to have lost a huge portion of its strength, due to which it toppled on the ground with a tumultuous bang. Finally, he felt content as both the voracious enemies had been knocked down. He wasn't persuaded if the monsters were dead, but their strength had deteriorated to the extent that they couldn't pose any further peril. What on earth was this peculiar fire poker he owned? Was it some divine weapon too, just like the weapons of his seniors? His ordinary stick never failed to impress him during demanding situations. He was slowly being convinced by the extraordinariness of the stick. 
As Xiao Fan dispelled the mythical creatures, he headed towards Senior Lu. She had blacked out on the ground due to the impactful plunge. Since his fire poker was still enlightened and luminous, it nourished Lu with its snugness. The dark chi on her body faded away slowly and steadily, because of which Xiao Fan was assured of her recovery. While he was busy healing Lu with his cultivation, he heard some strange crackling footsteps approaching him. Due to the pitch darkness, the personality wasn't discernible. However, as the footsteps neared, the personality was revealed to be Bi Yao, the beautiful girl Xiao Fan met back in Heiang City. Xiao Fan was flabbergasted to see that girl in the canyon. It was rightly said that the world was a small place. He never imagined coming across that girl ever again, but there she was, standing in front of him. Xiao Fan warned her of the menace associated with the area and advised her to leave in order to save her life. However, Bi didn't seem to be bothered in any way by the danger. Instead, she asked Xiao Fan if he had succeeded in spotting the dropped blood chamber in the abyss, as that was the major reason behind the visits of many righteous hypocrites. No righteous person would ever pay a visit to such a gloomy and filthy place if it weren't for the dropped blood chamber. Xiao Fan couldn't apprehend a single word she was blabbering. He was offended by being called a righteous hypocrite. It was unexpected of her to object to him visiting the canyon because she was present there too, despite being a righteous disciple. Xiao Fan mistook her as a member of the righteous sect. However, she cleared away his objections by introducing her to the celestial of the evil. Her reality blew out his mind. How could an evil disciple be so enchanting? He couldn't even imagine her being evil. Bi Yao's outlook clearly indicated that she was on an evil mission. Her eyes depicted wickedness, but Xiao Fan couldn't grasp the hints behind her unrighteous eyes due to the shocking blow he just received. In the meanwhile, Lu's strength had replenished, and she was slowly regaining her senses. The first thing she said was Xiao Fan's name. Xiao Fan's joviality was boundless when he heard Lu's voice. He was glad to see her recover. However, as soon as he turned towards Lu, Bi Yao ambushed him with a sudden magical spell cast on a divinely energized flower. Because Lu was facing Bi Yao, she noticed the attack and yelled to alarm Xiao Fan. As he turned towards Bi Yao, the flower was at a distance of less than a few inches from him, but he managed to block it with his fire poker. The stick enlightened with a bright luminosity and radiated a maleficent aura, which crumbled the flower into tens of pieces. Bi Yao was taken aback to witness a shabby stick block the spell of her magical weapon, the heartbreaking flower. Her mind was occupied with curiosity, vexation, and astonishment all at once. A while later, it was revealed that Bi Yao wasn't alone. She was accompanied by a fully equipped team. One of the team members was an astute woman who appeared to be quite wicked and ruthless. She advised Bi Yao to stay vigilant because she sensed something unusual about Xiao Fan's stick. The vicious aura it emitted was definitely not a characteristic of the divine righteous weapons. Moreover, she thought the stick housed an even more intense force that hadn't been unleashed yet because of a suppressing factor. Taking into account the malicious aura and the fierceness of the stick, it seemed that it had something to do with their holy sect. Due to his doubtful identity, they couldn't let go of him. Thus, the woman advised Bi Yao to capture Xiao Fan to be taken to her father. As her father was the sect master, he was knowledgeable about most of the weapons. In that way, his true identity would be revealed to them. Bi Yao agreed with her suggestion and made up a plan to act on it. Coincidentally, Bi Yao noticed her feet wholly soaked in water. She wasn't aware of the presence of water on the ground, so she asked her team member about it. It was revealed that the abyss was a part of the Heartless Sea, which was one of the five most mysterious seas. The piece of information proved to be crucial in her plan. She called out Xiao Fan and Lu, who were trekking their way towards a safe place so that Lu could rest for a while. Having their attention summoned, she told them that the dropped blood chamber they were looking for was in the vicinity of the Heartless Sea. Since she was aware of the hideouts of the canyon, she promised to guide them if they accompanied her. What a genius trap she had laid for them. Not even a clever person could have discerned her true intentions. However, little did she know that Xiao Fan and Lu weren't interested in the dropped blood chamber. Moreover, due to Lu's poor health, they weren't in the state to travel further. Thus, they refused to accompany them. The denial infuriated Bi Yao. She was a hot-headed and ruthless girl who never granted a second chance to her enemies, because her plan had failed, she threatened to fight the two of them. Lu was agitated by her threat because her deteriorated state of health didn't allow her to fight further. Her body was exhausted and nauseous, probably due to the poisonous effect of the magical attacks she had been experiencing. While she was unfit to combat, they were left with Xiao Fan alone to take care of the attacking front, which meant she could presume their death beforehand. She wanted to have a conversation about it with Xiao Fan, but he refused. He had already decided to fight against all odds in order to protect her, because she had remained by his side throughout, he was obliged to lay down his life for her sake. He acknowledged his weakness and incompetency, but vowed to stay by her side till they got out of the canyon. His kind words made her heart flutter. 
She had never felt that way before, but his consolidation brought her warmth and emotional strength. Before they could even initiate the battle, the ground quacked intensely. The rumbling was immensely powerful, and it caused the water to break into huge waves. The water waves splashed ferociously and were followed by a thunderous bang. From within the water, a cyclopean monster emerged. It was the Great Dark Water Hydra. Its size was immeasurable. All the people seemed to be even smaller than ants as compared to that colossal creature. Coming to its appearance, it was even more atrocious and dreadful than its size. It was a prodigious snake with a horrible tongue sticking out of its massive jaw. A glazing beam of green light radiated from its gross eyes. Everyone was gobsmacked by the terrifying monster. Xiao Fan's delicate hands trembled with terror. He had never even imagined such a ravening monster to exist. According to his meager experience, he considered the water kill-in monster in the sky reaching the peak to be the biggest monster alive. When compared to the dark water hydra, the water Keelan wasn't any greater than a puppy. Meanwhile, Bi Yao was quivering from trepidation too. She thought that the mighty beast had already been killed by the divine golden canary beast in the western swamp a thousand years ago. She was terrified to find it still alive. Her team member told her that Hydra was an extremely ferocious beast, and only the golden canary could drive it away. Since it was implausible for them to stand up against it, it was better to retreat. Her apprehensions and advice weren't groundless, but Bi Yao was worried about Xiao Fan. She desperately wanted to burst his reality. However, because her whole team had decided to retreat, she couldn't go against them. They sneaked out quietly from the scene, leaving Xiao Fan and Lu all alone at the mercy of the fierce beast. Lu was already out of strength, but when she saw the monster, she panicked badly. She grasped Xiao Fan's arm in order to pull him back. They retreated behind, with the water splashing due to their footsteps. The splashing sounds had infuriated the beast. Without lending them further time, it began hissing and geared up for an attack. The rumbling and roaring of the Hydra bespattered water droplets all around. The two of them had no option but to stand still and wait for the monster to cripple them. Lu was extremely petrified that she couldn't even help herself stand in front of the appalling snake. Xiao Fan asked her to hold tight to him and picked her up to calm her panic. They both knew their horrific end was near. The monster was ready to engulf them at any moment. Lu's eyes were sparkling with dreadful tears. She turned her face away from the monster and tucked herself into Xiao Fan's lap. Being closer to him brought her a special kind of warmth. The beast east hissed and plunged the two of them high in the air with its tail. While they were still in the air, the monster opened its appalling mouth and stuck its tongue out. Xiao Fan and Lu were holding tight to each other. Fortunately, they didn't fall onto the gigantic tongue of the Hydra, but were knocked down on the ground. The Hydra thought it had engulfed them, thus it slammed shut its mouth. Due to falling from such a high, Xiao Fan felt a crackling sound from his back while they banged on the ground. His ribs and spine were fractured. A spinal fracture made him slowly lose consciousness. He could vividly visualize Lu trying to say something, but the sound didn't reach his mind. He witnessed tears in her eyes. Sigh, he had failed to fulfill the promise of protecting her and staying by her side forever. It was a moment of shame and dishonor as an impassive girl was crying because of him. Slowly, he felt her hand slipping out of his grip. Despite thousands of promises and commitments, he let her fall into eternal darkness. He perceived himself as dead, but he had blacked out once again. However, the pain caused by the spinal injury still persisted, due to which he realized after a while that he was still alive. As he peeped open his eyes, he saw himself imprisoned in a strange environment. The circumambience was gloomy, similar to all the previous locations in the abyss. However, the dissimilarity in that area was that there were a multitude of mountains and cliffs in the surroundings. He took a quick scan of the surroundings and found Bi Yao sitting on top of a cliff nearby. She came down the cliff instantaneously when she saw him regain consciousness. Xiao Fan was staggered. He remembered being attacked by the Hydra before being blacked out. Now when he woke up, he was in a completely different location, with the demon from the evil cult. He didn't understand how he ended up all alone with her. Suddenly he recalled that she had called him for a fight before the great monster appeared. Maybe that was the reason she had imprisoned him in such a somber and desolate pit. The mere thought of fighting made him uneasy and fidgety. His fractured spine didn't allow him even to stand up properly. However, in order to protect his dignity and honor, he somehow managed to stand up tremblingly. His back was immensely sore, and the broken bones had altered his gait as well. Despite howling with pain, he belligerently ordered her to get down the cliff for combat. Bi Yao ridiculed him for his crinkled figure. She was amused by his fake expressions of fury and rage. His acting skills surely needed to be polished. Beneath the mask of wrath, his actual pain and soreness were easily discernible. Xiao Fan got offended. He wasn't grumping and howling on purpose. The snake's smack had fractured his whole back. Despite being tormented, he was putting up a good show. He asked her to try putting herself in his shoes. Bi Yao kept on mocking him for the hysterical incident he faced. 
However, to change the topic, Xiao Fan asked about how they ended up in that cave. He was curious about how he escaped the ferocious Hydra. Bi Yao told him that she was the one who rescued him from the appalling attack. She narrated the whole chain of events that occurred. While Xiao Fan was under the violent snake's attack, she coincidentally landed somewhere near the spot where he passed out after his bones were fractured. If she hadn't emerged at the right moment, he would have been crippled by the merciless monster. She thought of rescuing him by pulling him towards a safe place. However, when she tried tugging him aside, she soon ran out of strength as he was way too heavy to be carried by a small, feeble girl. Glancing around for a shortcut, she found a hole in the cave. She immediately dragged him into the hole in order to conceal him from the mighty snake. Unfortunately, the beast spotted them enter the cave, and it started smashing the cave crazily. Because its size was colossal, it couldn't fit itself into the hole, which further enraged it. But after a few attempts, it realized that banging the cave was of no use. In a fit of rage, it swept its tail, which somehow delivered a powerful impact at the cliff, resulting in the collapse of nearly half of the mountainous abyss. The whole mass of rock above the small cave they took refuge in had crumpled instantaneously. They were thus buried alive under the rock and transported into a further deep pit. Listening to the whole tale of being rescued by a cultist outraged Xiao Fan. As a righteous disciple, he preferred dying disciple to being ransomed by an evil cult. He burst into tears of fury. Witnessing his drama, Bi Yao said that it would have been better to let the snake swallow him alive when he was blacked out. She felt humiliated when he called her unworthy of rescuing a righteous man. Frustratingly, she plunged a pebble at him. Xiao Fan screeched in pain as the stone hit him. His anguish melted her fury, and she rushed towards him to check if he was fine. Xiao Fan rebelliously said that the pain of the pebble couldn't bring him down because he had endured the discomfort of the valorous attack of a snake. He didn't consider Bi Yao capable enough to hurt him. She was perplexed by the immense wrath he housed within his delicate body. Taking into consideration the intense situation, she thought of giving him some space to gather up his emotions. A while later, Xiao Fan began healing himself with his cultivation of energy. Bi Yao was taken aback to witness his extreme foolishness. How could he even think that his broken bones would heal with the healing spirit? Fractures definitely needed some external treatment to be fixed, but that rattle brain was devoid of such a basic piece of information. After a few failed attempts, Xiao Fan finally realized that his ailment required some external aid. Looking around, all he could find in that gloomy cave were stones and pebbles. Obviously, they were of no use to him. Bi Yao couldn't stand his fluff-headedness any further. To save him time and effort, she advised him to utilize his shabby stick for healing the bones. The idea instantly clicked in his mind. Why didn't he think of it himself? Probably because the idea was way too smart to enter his naive mind. All of a sudden, he realized that he was complimenting a demon. Within an instant, he modified his statement and said that it wasn't that genius of her to come up with that idea because he had already thought of it. Nevertheless, it was just one of their regular squabbles, which ended in a few minutes. For quite some time, Xiao Fan had been searching for Senior Lu. He couldn't find her anywhere around, so he thought of asking Bi Yao. Because he wasn't introduced to her name, he addressed her as a demon. Getting disgruntled by being called a demon again and again, she told him her real name and instructed him to be called by her full name in the future. Xiao Fan was amazed by her cute name. Demons didn't deserve such cute names, according to him, However, he came towards the main topic and inquired about Senior Lu. Bi Yao replied that she had not seen her anywhere around during the attack. The situation was way too intense, and I perished to search for others. Xiao Fan was cast down to hear about her disappearance. She was already ailed with poison. It wasn't easy for her to stand against the beast. He wondered if she would still be alive and safe. As Bi Yao witnessed his anxiousness, she caught the hint that he was very close to his senior. Xiao Fan told her that his seniors were the pride of their, of their sect. She was immensely gifted and talented. He was a pure idiot and an incompetent disciple in front of her. He kept on blabbering about her skillfulness that he didn't even realize he had been telling all that stuff to a demon. As soon as he got hold of his emotions, he rushed to search for Lu. Bi Yao told him that he had searched around the whole cave countless times when he was unconscious. There was no way out of it. Thus, his efforts were futile. She had navigated the entire cave and found no new information. Xiao Fan didn't believe her words. He insisted on searching the place himself. However, as expected, he found no way out after hours of searching. The only things he found were cliffs, trees, and waterfalls. The waterfalls of that cave were strange because they had no fish in them. Maybe his death was destined to commence in the dead-ended cave? Even his companion Lu wasn't with him. Would she still be alive? If she died, he wouldn't be able to face his master. His helplessness and agitation grew with each passing moment. Even Bi Yao noticed his restlessness. As his skin started turning pale, she asked him if his wounds were sore again. 
She had no idea he was perturbed by separation from Lou. Because he was running out of breath, she advised him to sit and rest for a while. All his superficial toughness and contentedness had been busted. His inner pusillanimous little kid was expressing itself. It seemed as if Xiao Fan was displeased with Bi Yao being concerned for his well-being. After all, the evil cults were enemies of the righteous sect. His irrelevant rant about evilness and righteousness had driven her crazy. She was the one who rescued him. She had been helping him throughout the time they spent in that cave, while Xiao Fan had only been rude and demeaning to her in the meantime. If their deeds were compared, Bi Yao was the more ethical one of the two. If being virtuous meant impertinence, then it was unjust to call him a righteous person. Instead, it was his self-claimed nobility, which he perceived as righteousness. In the first place, they were humans. Their sex and castes were secondary. Being stuck in a deep abyss, their foremost duty was to work in harmony with one another in order to come up with a practicable plan. Her words made their way straight into his heart. She was a genius girl who presented her stance with solid arguments. Xiao Fan acknowledged his wrongdoings and vowed to stay calm and collected in the future. All of a sudden, Xiao Fan saw a strange, shining thing coming down one of the waterfalls. Apparently, it resembled blood dripping off the cliff. As it dropped deeper, it amalgamated with water. Was it the blood-dripping chamber in which they were imprisoned? It was strange how it had been there for thousands of years, but none of them ever navigated it. Taking a look into the history of the dropped blood chamber, I noticed certain facts that Xiao Fan was unaware of. Bi Yao did the honor of narrating the backstory of the chamber to him. About 800 years ago, the strongest branch of the cult was the Blood Hall, which was led by the Elder Black Heart. The branch was an immense force altogether, and its team consisted of numerous powerful and sturdy warriors. Its master, the Black Heart, was himself a grandmaster in cultivation. However, during the course of time, the Blood Hall faced multiple clashes against the Righteous Group. Unfortunately, the Righteous Group triumphed over it, which led to the dissociation of the Blood Hall branch. In the present time, there were four major branches of the cult, which included the Amorous Lust Sect, Thousand Poison Sect, Eternal Life Sect, and the Demon Sect. Though each of them was ferocious and valorous in its own way, none of them could compete for the glory of the legendary Blood Hall branch. It was considered a verified statement by many that all the leaders of the Blood Hall were killed during the fight, but their weapons weren't demolished. Plenty of their magical weapons, along with some other secrets, were stashed away in a hidden place at the base of the ancient Bat Colony Canyon's drop blood chamber. Though Bi Yao was young, she had earned her rank as an important member of the demon sect branch. She had done many wonders for her sect previously, but the one she just did now was a remarkable one. She located the drop blood chamber. Her ancestors had been trying to spot it for 800 years but couldn't succeed. She was extremely thrilled about her procurement. Her thrill and excitement were justified since she had performed a remarkable job for her sect. Under her immense emotionality, she had behavior. Unknowingly, she had been hitting Xiao Fan out of excitement. He was getting hurt by her thrilling little attacks, but she didn't bother. After all, she was a fiend, and fiends were merciless and didn't care about anyone's sentiments. Bi Yao was a proud fiend who felt no shame in being called a demoness. She was grateful to Xiao Fan because he was the one because of whom she had discovered that place. If it weren't for him pointing it out to her, she would never have discerned the waterfall. Xiao Fan was worried about his image back in the sect. If his masters and other seniors came to know that he was the one who helped the evil cults, they might abash and punish him. However, his worrying about the future was utterly groundless because he thought his death was destined in that cave and he would never get back to his sect. While he was lost in his imaginary world, Bi Yao stepped forward into the waterfall in order to attain nourishment from the magical dripping blood. She pressed her hands firmly on the huge droplet of blood and waited for the reaction. A few moments passed by, but there was still no paranormal activity. Bi Yao was extremely short-tempered. She couldn't stand still and wait for a miracle to happen. As a consequence of her crabby nature, she furiously attacked the waterfall. Xiao Fan wasn't a novice to her wrath, so he didn't give it any special attention. Rather, he looked around for his food pouch since he was starving. He had not eaten anything ever since he entered the canyon. To his astonishment, the food pouch couldn't be found in any pocket of his dress. Maybe he had lost it somewhere during the fighting. Now he was going to starve to death within the abyss. He gazed desperately towards a nearby spring and wished it housed some fish. The water was crystal clear. How unnatural. Not even a single fish could be seen in it. While he was devastated by hunger, he saw Bi Yao still panting and messing around near the waterfall. He advised her to stop wasting her priceless strength over the meaningless blood drop. That energy and motivation could be invested in finding a way out. Otherwise, they both would have been sitting idle, staring at death. Bi Yao honored his idea. She took out a piece of bread and started munching on it. Xiao Fan was staggered to see food in her hand, and his hunger aggravated further. 
Seeing his restlessness, Bi Yao offered him the bread. Being full stomach would enhance his thought process. Though he was starving, he refused the food because he thought it might be poisoned by the fiends. Instead, he drank water to satisfy his hunger. All of a sudden, his attention was caught by the strange shadow of the blood droplet on the waterfall. He thought it resembled something. He yelled and summoned Bi Yao's attention immediately to show her the unique finding. Initially, she didn't discern anything unusual, but after giving it a deep thought, she associated the shadow with the image of a hand. She thought something was hidden beneath the shadow. To look for it, she pressed her hand onto the water, but her hand passed straight through the shadow. To her surprise, nothing was hidden under the shadow. To her surprise, nothing was hidden under the shadow. It was plausible that she might have been overconcerned about it, but the surrounding red stones looked suspicious too. She came up with a genius idea of pressing both stones together. Maybe that could stimulate a reaction. As she pressed both the stones simultaneously, the water started splashing and the environment was occupied by thunder and rumbles. Within a split second, the whole scenario became distressed. All of a sudden, the waterfall and the rocks behind it split apart into two, forming a pathway in between. Xiao Fan and Bi Yao were gobsmacked at the surprising turn of events. She didn't expect her trick to work in reality. Her expressions depicted extreme stupor. As they walked into the pathway, she expressed her gratitude for Xiao Fan. If it weren't for him, she would never have found her way into that mystery. While they were entering the chamber, Xiao Fan paused his steps suddenly. He felt a strange sensation go down his nerves. His mouth turned dry as a desert, and his face was slowly becoming blazing hot. When Bi Yao asked him about the matter, he replied that he was fine. He asked her not to worry about him and enter the chamber contentedly, because that was all she yearned for. However, Bi Yao wasn't persuaded by his oral consolation. She was distressed by his weird attitude. She thought he was scared of her, which was why he didn't want to pass the pathway with her. Upon being asked about the real issue, he replied that the chamber was for the evil cults and he didn't want to enter it as a righteous disciple. Bi Yao was taken aback by his stupidity. It was surprising that he wasn't ready to enter the cave, which had a safe and sound exit. When Bi Yao told him about the exit, he felt a little more comfortable and agreed to accompany her. They made their way into the legendary chamber where all the secrets and weapons were hidden. As they surpassed the entrance, the area ahead of them was completely dark. There wasn't even a single ray of light. No wonder why the Black Heart had stashed his weapons in an undetectable place. The cave was enormous, with huge mountains all around. They were having a difficult time channeling their way through the tortuous paths. The struggle was superimposed by the pitch darkness. As they trekked forward, they entered a tunnel amongst the mountains, which were slowly progressing higher and higher. As they reached the heart of the mountain, Bi Yao ordered Xiao Fan to stop as they had reached their destination. In front of them were two historic statues. Bi Yao elucidated that one of them was of the heavenly demon king, while the other one was of the divine entity of the netherworld. Bi Yao lowered in front of them in order to greet them with respect. She introduced herself as the disciple of the holy sect's 43rd generation. She explained the current state of the holy sect to them. They had been struck by a calamitous disaster, leading to the loss of their prosperity and glory. Thousands of honorable disciples had sacrificed their lives and belongings in order to bring back the glory, but nothing could make up for it. She prayed to the holiness to bestow them their blessings, which would bring back their lost reputation. She wished for their spirit to be spread to all beings on earth, which would guide them toward the blissful joy of immortality. Up till now, Xiao Fan thought he was getting along pretty well with her. Still, when she expressed her yearning for immortality, he realized that they were destined to be enemies. As Bi Yao was done with her prayer, she excitedly intended to introduce her idols to Xiao Fan. Still, he refused to listen because he had nothing to do with the holy sect. With tears sparkling in her eyes, she watched Xiao Fan step away from her. As he walked towards the exit, he came across a weird massive stone with a quote engraved on it. It was a prevalent quote from the book Tao Te Ching. Its importance can be discerned from the fact that it had been used innumerable times in that book. Xiao Fan was puzzled to see such a renowned quote featured deep down in a desolated abyss. He was in a trance for a while, but he couldn't disclose his emotions to Bi Yao due to enmity with her sect. Thus, he quietly advanced without making his amazement evident. A few steps ahead, he met with another bizarre experience. His fire poker all of a sudden started radiating a soft and warm gleam. His hand was nourished by its coziness. He wondered why it was giving off that strange glow. The glow was incredibly outlandish at the orb glued at the tip of the stick. The orb seemed to emit a light originating from the bluish end of the spectrum. However, the light was immensely soft and cozy. Its warmth indicated the feeling of reuniting with an old friend for the first time in a long while. Xiao Fan didn't stop. He continued trekking ahead. 
Along his way, he came across a statue of an evil-looking man. In the circumambience of that statue, his fire poker radiated an even stronger gleam. The vibe of the light resembled the feeling of nostalgia and endless remembrance. Could it be that the fire poker shared a relation with that region, or more specifically, that statue? Though the statue was meaningless for Xiao Fan, Bi Yao was overwhelmed with joy when she saw it. She headed closer to it right away. After cherishing it for a while, she explained that the statue was of the great Black Heart Master. He was the dignified Grandmaster of Cultivation, and his name was feared by the entire world 800 years ago. She was blown away by his regality. As expected, Xiao Fan wasn't interested in hearing any praise about any of the statues there, because he had nothing to do with evil cults. He ignored her babbling and continued looking around for the exit. Bi Yao was immensely pissed off by his discourteous behavior. They had been bantering and having some pleasant conversations earlier, but his sudden turned-off attitude was bothersome. She was the princess of the holy sect. No one had ever treated her like that before. His cheekiness was traumatizing to her. No wonder why she considered all the righteous disciples jerks. She slammed his fake virtuousness and refused to search for the exit with him. Now, he was left all alone at the mercy of the dark chamber. For a while, he thought she was fooling around with him. Thus, he didn't give her attention and proceeded further with his search. However, after a while, when he looked behind her, she didn't follow him. That was when he realized he was trekking arduous paths all alone. Back at the mountain, he used to get along well with everyone. Still, the bickering with Bi Yao was unavoidable for him. His feelings of hatred and annoyance towards her were probably due to her association with the cults. Because he found no good in becoming friends with a friend, he didn't dare call after her and apologize. He just walked his way towards the exit, all alone. Meanwhile, Bi Yao was outraged at his boorishness. She had been treating him respectfully as a friend ever since they encountered each other. Still, that moron was way too ungrateful to be nicely dealt with. She started walking in a direction opposite to that of Xiao Fan. When she almost reached the end of the cave, she ran across a massive stone chamber. Within it was built a weaponry. She excitedly rushed into the chamber to view the special magical weapons. All the shelves were tagged with the name of the weapon, but to her astonishment, they were all empty. Not even a single weapon was found in the weaponry. Her fury was boundless when she found out that she had been bluffed. There wasn't anything she could actually do about it. Thus, she sat grumpily on one of the stone benches. Out of the blue, she coincidentally saw a gleaming treasure box beside the bench. Apparently, it looked enchantingly magical. She realized it was heavy as she picked it up. It was entirely plausible that it housed a precious weapon. Finding an unlocked box in a majestic weaponry wasn't an ordinary thing. She had to open it. However, as soon as she unbolted its lock, a thundering lightning was summoned. The box slipped away from her hands and fell on the floor. Due to the unforeseen incident, her magical flower weapon was damaged. She was dismayed at the desecration of her weapon. Still, her feelings were overshadowed when she saw some cute bells within the treasure box. It was far-fetched that a geezer might cautiously protect some ordinary bells with ancient necropolis on them. However, they couldn't be as simple as they appeared. As she picked them out of the box, an extremely melodious sound was produced due to the tingling of the bells. She was mesmerized by its jingle. A few moments passed just like that. Bi Yao had not heard anything from Xiao Fan's side in the meantime, which caused her to become apprehensive about his safety. She thought of checking on him and thus rushed towards his side of the cave. Luckily, she found him soon and peeked at him secretly. He was busy reading some script engraved on a huge stone. As she read the script, she almost jumped out of her skin. It was the script of heaven. It expounded the concept of how the earth and heaven were distinguished from each other back when everything in the universe was amalgamated. Xiao Fan was observing it quite keenly. He was instantly amazed when Bi Yao yelled that it was, it was the script of heaven. Did she have any prior information about it? She explained to him that it was the doctrine of their holy sect, and all the spectacular techniques their disciples were taught were initially sourced from the script of heaven. She abashed Xiao Fan as he read the script. He always referred to them as the wicked fiends. Thus, he had no right to peep into their top secrets. However, he ignored her and continued reading. In fact, his expressions depicted extreme astonishment. According to the doctrine, the eternal beings had no life. They were everlasting because they were segregated from the rest of the world. For someone like Bi Yao, who practiced only their own cult, the script was no more than a holy text left by their praiseworthy ancestors. However, when Xiao Fan read it, he found it immensely horrible, probably because he had mastered the sacred mantras of both Buddhism and Taoism. He couldn't help himself from reading it further. It had a profound effect on his intellect. It got his mind racing and face turning pale. With raving curiosity and uncanny eagerness, he felt that the secret in front of him was both intangible and invisible. Yet it enticed a dent that drove him closer to his goal. His mind welcomed a haunting thought that he had never felt ever before. The script had influenced him to such a great degree that he started questioning his beliefs. 
What on earth was the right way? Which cult was actually the righteous one? Was the sect he followed really a virtuous one? Though he was shamefaced for questioning his practice, he couldn't help but go deeper into his thoughts. Though the script was a doctrine of the evil fiends, each word written on it was like a knife stabbing into the depths of his heart. Throughout his life, he was a firm believer in the concept that the cultivation practice of the Qing Yun sect was similar to the one taught by monk Pu Ji. However, his legs trembled with puzzlement when he found out that both practices were poles apart. Moreover, his childhood concept, which said that Buddhists and Taoists believe in different cultivation, was also falsified when he found out that they were reasonably related to one another. According to the secret doctrine of the cults, the techniques of both the sects ended in the same results, despite going through different schools of thought. Taoism was majorly about bending nature to one's will, whereas Buddhism focused on one's own understanding of nature. Theoretically, they might be dissimilar, but practically both concepts were alike. The cults, who apparently were known to practice heretically and abnormally, mainly deduced their techniques from the script of heaven. They merged the idealism of the Taoistic sect and the wisdom of Buddhists in order to form a unique practice of their own. He once again pondered over the question of the actual proper way. All the information in the script stimulated him to brainstorm his hypothesis. On the other hand, Bi Yao was annoyed by his unresponsiveness. She jerked him to retrieve him from the world of endless imaginations, but he was still aloof. She reminded him that it was the history of their cult, and that it was unjust for him to read all the secrets. What was so interesting about the script of heaven? Why was he so invested in it despite condemning the evil sect? She was immensely vexed at him for not replying to her. Looking at him, she recalled the accident her weapon had met just a few moments ago. He was the one to blame. If she hadn't rescued him, they wouldn't have landed in that place, and neither would her weapon be damaged. She squinted her eyes and made a strange expression. It seemed as if she was trying to analyze the reason for her anger. After a few moments, she jumped in excitement and rushed toward the center of the cave, but accidentally knocked down a statue behind her. The head of the statue smashed onto the ground. As she looked behind, she was staggered to see that she had decapitated her elder, Black Heart's remains. What a misfortune it was. She also found a poem inscribed on the wall behind the statue. However, it sounded as if it was written for a girl tortured by love. It was weird for such a poem to exist in the dropped blood chamber. She immediately called Xiao Fan to take a look at the peculiar poem. Xiao Fan came and was startled to see what she had done. He picked up Black Heart's head with respect in order to put it back. Bi Yao thought he was trying to disrespect the divine entity. She told him that they were both the disciples of the holy sect. Despite being from totally unlike branches and cults, they still vowed in front of their ancestors and elders to maintain the element of respect towards them. Xiao Fan was stunned. He wasn't trying to disrespect them in any way. In fact, he wanted to put it back onto the body of the statue. It was foolish of her to call him rude and discourteous because she was the one who crippled his head. However, she was going to repent to her deities anyway. To avoid further conflict, Xiao Fan slowly put his head back over the statue. While he was putting it back, he felt a strange chi run down his body. There was a unique, lively, energetic connection between Xiao Fan and the statue. He felt as if he was meeting an old friend after decades. The feeling that united them came from his, his fire poker. There, indeed, was something unnatural about that fire poker. It was glowing brightly and warmly, as if it had an exceptional memory associated with that area. He had no idea why it had been gleaming like that. He thought of inquiring his master about it if he safely returned back to the mountain. Suddenly, his attention was caught by something written on the base of the statue. Surprisingly, it was a continuation of the poem written on the wall behind him. After reading the poem, they discerned that the ending sentences were slightly faded. The last sentence seemed incomplete, as if the one who had written it had become too weak to complete the sentence. The poet must have had a heart-wrenching love story. The woman mentioned in the tale ended up with heartbreak, and the man lost his life carrying the burden of regret on his back. Towards the end of the poem, the golden bell is mentioned. Bi Yao elucidated that the Golden Bell Lady was one of the most honorable personalities back in their history. Perhaps the poet had mentioned her. She was known to be a quick-witted lady with exceptional cultivation skills. She had deeply grasped the concept of the script of heaven, which, which led to her discovering one of the branches of the holy sect. The amorous lust sect was solely and exclusively founded by her. In short, she was one of the most influential and powerful females of the holy sect. It seemed as if Bi Yao was immensely impressed by her achievements and cherished her as an idol. However, Xiao Fan thought the name of the sect branch that she founded was quite obscene. It indicated at her being a lewd woman. His opinion was in favor of the Black Heart. He considered him a faithful man who died for his love, whereas Bi Yao's support was with the Golden Bell Lady. She pondered the old geezer to be a heartless man who broke the Golden Bell Lady's heart. Such a dispassionate man was served right when he died under thundering attacks.
The never-ending squabble between Xiao Fan and Bi Yao had once again been initiated. Bi Yao said that the Golden Bell Lady was the best, and as a token of her glory, she was going to take the Amorous Bell with her. Xiao Fan was subconsciously defending Black Heart without realizing that he was speaking in favor of a fiend. When he realized that he had been unnecessarily supporting an evil, he backed off from further quarrel. He told Bi Yao that they should be looking for an exit rather than fighting over the loyal lover. Bi Yao agreed, and they embarked on the mission of winding their way out. They searched the waterbeds, the cliffs, and all the walls, but found no trigger or exit. It had cost them four long hours, but it was still all vague. Eventually, they surrendered and sat beside a cliff, with their backs against each other. Bi Yao was exhausted. She couldn't walk anymore. Xiao Fan had lost all hope. He was assured that they were going to die within that gloomy chamber. Not even a single sign of an exit could be discerned. They had searched every inch of the walls and every crack in the stones. Despite Bi Yao's objection, Xiao Fan even examined the statues but still couldn't find anything. It appeared as if their death was gradually approaching them. All of a sudden, Senior Linger popped up in Xiao Fan's mind. She was dismayed at his extra-long venture and was calling him back. From that moment onwards, a uniquely unique motivation was instilled into Xiao Fan's mind. He was desperate to return to the mountain. Even if he had to die, he would prefer dying on the mountain in front of his seniors. His death would have been meaningless if he died in a desolate cave. No one would even find him ever again. The fear of dying unnoticed wasn't letting him sit idle. He got up and started searching the whole chamber again. He said out loud that he would definitely make it out of the abyss alive. Hearing him say that motivational phrase made Bi Yao recall a particular person. There was a person who had once said the same thing, too. He was also headstrong like Xiao Fan. It appeared as if that special person was very dear to her. She was deeply lost in his thoughts. Meanwhile, Xiao Fan persistently searched around the chamber. He was excessively worn out by all the hustle and bustle. Even walking was an uphill battle for him. All of a sudden, he started huffing and panting and eventually knocked over onto the ground with a bang. Hearing the bang, Bi Yao rushed towards him. As his eyes were shut, she thought he was on the verge of death. Fortunately, he was alive, and he slowly opened his eyes. Bi Yao was relieved to know that it was just a blackout due to exhaustion. She observed that his forehead was burning. Was he having a fever? Though it was known that, that cultists had tough bodies and they rarely got sick, he got down with a fever. He must have been experiencing immense exhaustion. He got sick at the very wrong time and at the wrong place. There wasn't any medicine or a doctor who could heal him. She held his fist in order to assess the degree of the fever. All of a sudden, he furiously pulled back his hand and started babbling that his mom and dad were killed by some monster whom he wouldn't let live. He was experiencing a horrific dream. His fear in the dream had turned into reality when Bi Yao held his hand. Bi Yao was staggered by his mumbling and babbling. Was he high with fever, or was he narrating a real tragedy? Were his parents and the village actually turned into ashes by a monster? She had no idea of the backstory. All she could do was to calm him down. She massaged his hand and comforted him that there was no monster around. Soon, his terror calmed down, and he started sobbing softly. Bi Yao thought his body might be aching, but he started blabbering something strange. He started calling out Senior Linger's name. Xiao Fan had been picturing Senior Linger along with Senior Chi Hao in his dream. The fact that she was with Chi Hao was immensely traumatizing to him. He felt as if he was going away from his love forever. Seeing his agony, Bi Yao hugged him tightly and assured him that his senior was right there beside him. She pretended to be a senior linger for him. How empathetic of her. She assured him that his senior would never leave him. Bi Yao ended up being teary-eyed after witnessing his pain. Her ancestor, the Golden Bell Lady, had taught the women of their sect that all men were heartless, but all her teachings were falsified by this young man who was extremely faithful to his love. She put him to sleep so that his agony could be calmed while she herself started going through Black Heart's poem in order to comprehend its true meaning. As she got away with the whole poem, she sighed. Out of the blue, Xiao Fan asked him what she was sighing for. He had finally recovered from the blackout. She was glad to see him awake. She told him that the sigh was for the Golden Bell Lady. Despite being immensely gorgeous and gifted, her feelings were severely crushed by a stinky man. Life was very unjust towards her. She shouldn't have wasted her precious life for a jerk like him. While gazing at the poem, she noticed something alarming about the last word of the last sentence. The way it was engraved was different from the other words. It had an atypical dent in it, which indicated a hidden exit. With high hopes, she injected one of the bell buttons into it. To her surprise, the button fitted perfectly into the ditch. An instant later, the wall started crumbling down. She was happy that there must be an exit behind it. But as the wall crackled down, another wall was revealed. It had writing on it, too. Xiao Fan was pissed off because he expected an exit. However, Bi Yao seemed to cherish the words. She was keenly reading them and began explaining them to Xiao Fan as well. 
It was about the undying love mantra. He had no interest in listening to the mantra unless it had to do something with the exit. Nevertheless, Bi Yao continued her narration. The love mantra had been passed down within the holy sect since ancient times. It had been comprehended by an ingenious female grandmaster from the script of heaven. It was unique because only women could grasp its concept. The mantra had the spectacular power of transforming a woman into a grisly and immensely vigorous spell. Xiao Fan interrupted her and presented his five cents, saying that it should be named the Grizzly Blood Mantra instead. It was a hard pill for him to swallow because he considered the fiends unworthy of love. According to him, the fiends were merely puppets with no emotions. Bi Yao somewhat agreed with him. After all, the Golden Bell Lady was also flubbed for falling in love. Fast forward, the two of them spent a few more days within the horrific abyss. Though they had nothing much to do, Bi Yao used to kill her time by staring at the undying love mantra as if in a trance. Meanwhile, Xiao Fan's time passed by studying the script of heaven. He still couldn't get to the bottom of the concept that united Buddhism and Taoism. It could plausibly mean that the Tai Chi technique and enlightening techniques were to be used simultaneously. He soon began cultivating according to the instructions of the doctrine. However, it wasn't an easy job to perform both practices simultaneously. It required very high levels of endurance, which he lacked. His blood used to boil when he didn't make any apparent progress for several days. Apart from that, that, the significant issue they faced was a shortage of food. Though they had plenty of clean waterfalls to drink from, there wasn't any food supply nearby. They sustained on Bi Yao's food items for a few days, but eventually ran out of that too. Due to the scarcity of resources, Bi Yao had waned. She started resembling just an ordinary innocent girl. No one could discern her as a princess. After living with her for a few days, Xiao Fan was impressed by her inner beauty. He had always been taught by his masters that evil cultists were selfish and cruel. But then he met Bi Yao, a cultist who shared half of her food with him. Her soft-heartedness had stirred him. She falsified all the derogatory allegations about the fiends. Now that they were stuck in a dead-ended cave with no food and were extremely close to death, Xiao Fan found it safe to ask her about his concerns. He asked her why she had been sharing her limited food items with him. If she had kept all her resources to herself, she could have lived a little longer and maybe found a way out too. Bi Yao explained that she wasn't fond of dying in an isolated cave. She wanted to live and escape more than anything. However, if her only companion was turned into a rotting skeletal corpse due to lack of food, it would have killed her as a person. She preferred dying out of starvation rather than living on food that could help another person live. In that case, she would have died out of madness even before starvation. Her stance made sense. It was natural for anyone to share the food in such a daunting situation. Out of the blue, Bi Yao approached Yao Fan and asked him for a promise. She told him that she knew he was desperate to return to his senior linger at any cost. While they were out of food, they would hardly survive for seven more days without food. Because Xiao Fan had visited the canyon with his companions, it was likely that they would come to rescue him soon. Thus, he needed to live longer, because the longer he lived, the higher the chances of his team finding him. Bi Yao's concerns were vague, like riddles. Xiao Fan couldn't comprehend what she meant to say. In more precise words, Bi Yao told him that if he found her too weak in the coming days, he should kill her and feed himself on her flesh and blood. That would probably help him live longer. She asked him for his commitment to utilize her in extreme hardship. Initially, Xiao Fan's expressions and feelings were fuzzy. However, as he gave it a more profound thought, he burst out in wrath. Her stipulation was as absurd as expected of the fiends. Was she even in her senses? How could she suggest such a hideous idea? Xiao Fan wasn't someone who would sink to a level of feeding himself on flesh. He perceived her intentions differently. He thought she had come up with the plan in order to degrade him for having her food. If that was the case, he promised to pay her off with his own flesh. Bi Yao sighed at his outbreak. She defended her stance by saying that she was afraid of death. It was highly nerve-wracking for her to wait for the inevitable death by herself. She politely presented two options to Xiao Fan. Either he could eat her, or he could kill her and dispose of her body. In that way, she would be saved from the haunting trauma of inescapable death. Xiao Fan was utterly taken aback by her agony. Bi Yao narrated to him the untold tragedy of her childhood. When she was six, her mother took her to the Six Foxes Cave at Fox Fork Mountain in order to visit her grandmother. She was very thrilled to meet her because they got along very well. When they reached, her grandmother picked her up and hugged her tightly. It was such a peaceful family reunion, which she used to look forward to every weekend. As they were about to enter the cave, a few appalling men came and started yelling at them. They came from the righteous sect, tasked to finish off the fiends. Bi Yao's mother was all fidgety to see a whole bunch of people attacking them. She held on to Bi Yao firmly. Because they saw no other valid option, they instantly retreated into the cave to shield themselves. Her grandmother abashed them for their righteousness, which allowed the killing of innocent women and children. One of the attackers was Monk Pufang from the Tianyin Temple. 
He harshly replied to her grandmother that all the fiends were similar, and each one of them deserved to be killed. There were no children or women amongst them. Without even issuing a warning, the monk used his magical weapon, the Buddha Golden Bowl, and collapsed the six foxes' cave. Instantaneously, the cave turned into debris with a colossal banging sound. Due to his ruthlessness, Bi Yao and her family were buried alive under the remains. That incident was a massive blow for all of them. Bi Yao was way too small at that time to comprehend anything. All she could do in that devastated state was to cry. They had survived the righteous disciples because the cave was a small one surrounded by large boulders. Grandmother couldn't survive because she was crushed under an enormous slab. After gathering their emotions, they buried the grandmother. Now it was only Bi Yao and her mother under the endless rubble of the cave. They were surrounded by pitch darkness. When Bi Yao used to tell her mother that she was scared, her mother used to console her by assuring her that her father would be coming any moment to rescue them. Days passed by just like that, without any whereabouts of her father. It was becoming burdensome for them to survive under the rubble without any food supply. Only a few drops of rainwater used to dribble down through crevices between the rocks. Other than that, they had no connection with the exterior world. Bi Yao used to cry endlessly due to hunger. One day, her mother asked her to wait for her while she went to fetch some food. When she returned, she had a piece of meat in her hand, which she gave to Bi Yao. Her mother was smiling, apparently, but she grew weaker and weaker with each passing instant. Bi Yao was too hungry to care about anything. She immediately gobbled down the piece of meat. After that day, her mother used to bring her meat every now and then, but her voice waned out subsequently. Bi Yao was too young to discern the reason behind it. She just used to calm her hunger with the meat. Everything went smoothly when one day, she found her mother dozed off beside a tree. She came and called her, but she didn't receive any response. It was at that moment that she realized her mother had died. From that moment on, Bi Yao was left all alone to wait for her inevitable death. The terror of seeing her mother's body rot next to her was unmatched. Who could have expected such a small girl to live unaided in pitch darkness? Each and every moment she spent in that cave was filled with constant fear and threat. Then one day, there finally came a ray of light from the top of the canyon. The light started getting broader and broader, and eventually, Bi Yao saw that her father had come to rescue her. He asked her about her mother, but she was dead long ago. Thus, he only rescued Bi Yao. He covered her with a cloak and picked her up. While leaving the cave, Bi Yao constantly gazed at her mother's remains. It was heart-wrenching for a small child to give up her mother. She was devastated to leave without her. While narrating her tragic story, Bi Yao collapsed all of a sudden. She got too weak and fragile to proceed further with the story. It was strange how, just a few moments ago, Xiao Fan was on the verge of death, while now it was her turn to be severely ailed. It was a miracle that both of them were still alive. In such terrifying circumstances, they must have lost the battle of life long ago. In a split second, Bi Yao started screaming. She was quivering and sweating badly, probably due to a dreadful dream she was witnessing. Xiao Fan was perplexed to see her collapsed condition. Though he couldn't be of any help, he took off his jacket and laid it on the floor for her to sleep peacefully on it. Meanwhile, Bi Yao had been dreaming about the same incident. When her father came to rescue them, she took him to the place where her mother had been sitting unresponsive for a few days. When her father rushed towards her, he found out that she was dead. He also saw marks of meat being cut from her. Did it mean that she had been feeding Bi Yao on her own meat? That was an astonishing revelation to little Bi Yao. However, instead of taking her home, her father got enraged. His eyes depicted extreme wrath for Bi Yao. He wanted to kill her for murdering her mother. Bi Yao understood everything. She took the blame on herself. Had she not cried insanely for food, her mother wouldn't have to hurt herself in order to feed her. It was solely her fault, but she was a small child. Her hunger didn't allow her to ask her mother about the endless meat she was being provided with. The next thing she witnessed in her dream was her mother going toward the darkest end of the cave, carrying a knife along with her. When she reached the corner, she took out the knife and cut a massive chunk of meat from her hand. That was when Bi Yao started yelling in her sleep. She was asking her mother to refrain from it. She wanted to stop her in any possible way to save her life and reverse the whole calamity. When her screaming got out of control, Xiao Fan tugged her in order to retrieve her from the ghastly dream. When she woke up, he told her that her dream was in no way close to reality. Her father would have never wanted to kill his only child. It was all her illusion because she had been burdening herself with the whole blame. Bi Yao argued that her father already hated her because she was a fiend. It wasn't hard for him to condemn her for murdering her mother. Xiao Fan told her that her perceptions were false and groundless because her father had been treating her well ever since he rescued her, and neither did he try to accuse her in any way. The whole blame game was just a childhood regret that grew bigger in her heart over the years. She was way too small as a child to understand anything back then. It was unjust to hold herself accountable for anything. Her mother was the one who loved her beyond anything. 
She hurt herself in order to save her loved one. It was all done by her consent. Bi Yao wasn't to be blamed for it because she was too small to hurt anyone willfully. If her mother peeked at her from heaven, she would be heartbroken to see her daughter waste her life in agony. To make her feel better, Xiao Fan put forward a case in point. If Bi Yao sacrificed her life for her mother, she wouldn't ever regret it or blame her mother for taking her life. Instead, she would want to see her content. Hearing Xiao Fan's kind words made her feel much better. Her long-lost confidence was replenished. She took an oath to try her best to survive, merely for the sake of her mother's sacrifice. She pondered over the thought of misunderstanding her father throughout the years. Maybe he didn't have any cold feelings for her. Perhaps the whole coldness in his attitude was a result of her faulty perception. She amended her outlook towards life after Xiao Fan's emotional address. She stood up and expressed her gratitude to Xiao Fan for broadening her outlook. She was standing so close to him that his heart started pounding and racing. He rushed away from her immediately. It was getting uncomfortable for him to face her. Bi Yao was taken aback by his childish attitude. Because they had to survive together in that cave, the awkwardness soon ended. A while later, the two of them were found sitting next to each other and chit-chatting. Judging by their current situation, they were destined to die together in that cave in a few days if they didn't receive any help. Keeping in mind the given circumstances, Bi Yao asked him a very diplomatic question. She asked him if it would be regretful for him to die together in the cave with her. She expected a negative answer, but Xiao Fan said that he would definitely be regretful. Dying in the abyss with her was fine as long as he was buried on the bamboo peak. Bi Yao understood his stance because she was already aware of his love story. Out of the blue, she asked Xiao Fan if it was due to his desire to meet Ling'er. Xiao Fan's heart almost missed a beat. How on earth did she know about his senior? She revealed that he had been calling out her name while he was blacked out. Don't forget to like and comment for the next part. Join our Discord for the name of the book and subscribe for more videos from us.